Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, Boston Cops! Oh! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunder Day, on this Feel Good Friday, August 11th, 2023. This sports program starts right now. Football! Okay, the boys made a decision there right before we went live to say football yep. instead of feel good on this glorious Friday. We can't thank you enough for joining us. The reason why they said football is because we had two preseason football games last night. That's Woo! right. We got six games today, six games tomorrow, two games on Sunday. Damn. We have a weekend full of NFL jerseys playing on NFL field. Hell yeah. Now, there's a couple questions that we have to raise here on this beautiful Friday. Are the Patriots dead? They're completely well, defeated. Well, yeah, they are. <laughs> they are. Oh, they are. oh, are they? on the road to potentially losing every single game this year. They've already started out for one. Certainly possible. They're uh -oh. trying their absolute best to lose every single game. Patriots might be dead. And on the flip side, are the Texans a favorite? Woo! Chance. How about the Vikings? They stink. Seattle Seahawks, they're awesome. Yep. Now, the real deal of the whole convo, and we we're kind of mocking it all because at one point in time, people actually thought that way what we just said oh, yeah. about preseason games. Now, what are we looking for? Well, we want to see if the young guys are doing well. Well, I think I think old Tank did pretty well last Very night. Well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think old uh, Malik Cunningham had yep. a great fourth quarter last night. All right. I think Jordan Addison looked damn good. Yep. Uh -huh. I think some punters looked good. I think some kickers looked good. I think there was a little bit of offense, a little bit of surprise. Some strategy from teams that maybe leads us to believe that that might be what they are this season. There's certain things we can find in these games. We just have to look for them. And last night, we certainly did that. Um, did forget... What's that? That um, it's the local commentary teams. Mm. Yeah. Bingo. Did. So that first game, Patriots-Texans up there in New England, it was awesome to see that fucking Boston wicked Paul. Yes. Mm -hmm. Drop his ass in in Bob's discount yep. furniture studio. Awesome. I didn't know at the beginning if that guy owned the furniture store. Yep. It was Bob. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know if that was like his actual furniture store, which is why he was there. Like, Let's check in with Bob on the couch there, Bob's furniture. He had the best Boston accent mm -hmm. I've heard in a long, long time. Every time this dude popped up on a screen, I was all ears. Oh, yeah. I wanted to hear how he pronounced some words. I wanted to hear what he was thinking. And also, I know that this son of a bitch, Paul, boots on the ground at Patriots camp, and he's going to shoot us straight. Yep. Just like Tommy Kern and everybody right. else we've yeah. ever heard from him. Mm -hmm. yep. So it was a fun experience listening to the local broadcast. Then we get to the second game, local broadcast, technical difficulties. We're starting a little bit later. I'm like, well, the game's already at fucking 10 o'clock. Yeah. We need to not Sorry. start any later. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard for me to stick through this. They go to the Seattle coverage, Michael Robinson and former player, a lady I did not know. And then Mikey Bennett was up there as well, former D lineman, an absolute stud, brother of Marty Bennett. So obviously that was an entertaining... Uh, Booth. Booth. Sure. They cut that thing off, though, because of technical difficulties? Maybe. Yeah, we'll mm -hmm. see. Maybe. I don't know if that was technical difficulties or if they're like, uh, we got fucking the guy, yeah. the local guy, on the other side of the fucking stadium right now. We should technical difficulties cut this thing right over to Paul Allen with the Minnesota Vikings, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that decision was made or if it was actual technical difficulties. If. As soon as they went over there, what? A hey, Paul, you're a talent, pal. Yeah, yeah. unbelievable. You're a real talent. The Minnesota Vikings fans are lucky that you are their guy, mm -hmm. their voice. We had Myron Cope growing up mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He was the creator of the terrible towel. Yep. He was also the creator of his own language. We're talking about not really speaking. The ultimate yinzer was this guy. Now, every once in a while, he'd have 10 beers, 20 beers, 30 right, beers, right. hop in a car and drive. Not good. That'll but happen. you put him in a yinzer. booth behind a microphone, he absolutely crushed it for it. Now, whenever you hear these local commentary teams during these preseason games, you all got to kind of take it with a grain of salt. But I think last night was a Paul. Allen yeah. showcase. Right. Big time. And I learned that. So I'm excited to watch through the weekend, see who's doing what, what teams are where. And let's go to the toxic table at Boston Connor, Connor's Mollet, and at Ty Schmidt. Connor, with you, Patriots played completely defeated. What did you see oh. last night that makes you excited? Seems like that 55 year old dog yeah. is going to be very yeah. good for you mm -hmm. guys. Yeah, bingo. Keon White, we all saw him when he got drafted in the second round, and it looked as though that he was a 40 year old man. He's wearing 99. A lot of people are saying, you know, he's probably fourth in the depth 
depth chart with defensive ends after last night, it's clear to see that guy's going to play a lot. Yeah. He was very good. All the young guys on defense really did well. Gonzalez got beat on one one-on-one -on -one in the corner, but he punched it out, ended up going out of bounds, didn't really matter. Did kind of get beat, but he still looked good. Uh, Jalen Mills playing safety. It is clear once again that this team is going to be a very good defensive team, and then all questions are on the front. But – just to clarify, watching Bailey zip on the ball, Zappy, jog off the field after, you know, a third and four, not make you know, not getting it done, and seeing Bill O'Brien in the background of a camera yeah. shot as he's walking off yes. and Bill O'Brien is saying shit to him. Like I, I, I can't tell you how good that felt just to watch. Just because last year, obviously a big thing with Mac, the body language, him throwing his hands up in the air a lot of the times when he's on the field on the sideline, there was the Bills. Thursday night prime football game where, you know, Max yelling on the sideline, throw the fucking ball to Patricia. And now it's flipped. Now we got Bill O'Brien <laughs> yelling at the QBs. And that's exactly what I think Patriots fans want. And I bet Mac and Zappy probably want that too, just because of how big of a shit show it was last night. But at the end of the night, Malik Cunningham is the next Lamar Jackson. So I don't know if Mac and Zappy even matter. Because yep. his Cunningham kid, he might get in week two and just never look back. And I'm, I'm here for it. I love it. We should put in four tight ends, Ramondre Stevenson and Cunningham, and run the read option up and down the fucking field. Well, especially if you got that good of a defense. Yes. You run the ball, mm -hmm. go ahead and bury the clock, and then have your defense get off the field. Boom. You're in a good spot. You can win some very boring games. Who cares? We're winning. Yes. With that being said, 259 picks in this mm -hmm. last year last draft. Mm -hmm. okay? That's right. I think it was a long snapper or two drafted. Yeah. One of them might not make the team. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, that, that, that is like seventh round. I was picked 222. Didn't even know how to fucking punt. Was drafted <laughs> to punt. Like, hey, your potential could be a good punter. Now, Bill Polian's a Hall of Famer. Obviously, he saw something that I didn't fully comprehend as the only punter in the history of the NFL that couldn't touch my fucking toes. Mm -hmm. And you still draft me. Like, I appreciate that. But everybody knows that that was just like a throwaway. Yeah. Like, yeah, if it's whatever. 259 picks in that draft last year. Malik Cunningham was not drafted. No. So somehow this guy is an undrafted free agent that Bill Belichick finds. And in the fourth quarter of the first preseason game, he gets an opportunity to play quarterback, electrifies <laughs> mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Game was a little bit of a dud. You yeah, know, a little, yeah, little bit of a dud. Preseason game. Then he comes in. You see all the mass holes like, oh, there you go. look at this score, 20 to three with six minutes left in the game. Mass holes still in abundance at Gillette Stadium with that jumbotron looking glorious. Yeah. And those who stayed got the witness Yeet. a dog. This dude had his fucking helmet ripped off. Actually, at one point, it was like, my eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my eye. The hell? The ref was like, did you get a concussion? He's like, no, I got my helmet <laughs> to my... I got the back of my helmet to my eye. Yeah. Me my eye. Tell me how that happens in this league or whatever. And that guy's definitely not going to make the team. The guy just tackled somebody about <laughs> the face. Yeah. Not supposed to be in the NFL. But he gets up. Very next play. How you doing? Keep it moving. Strike! Oh. What a ball. Yeah. Would have been a tud. Yeah. Doesn't matter, though, because what Malik Cunningham would go on to do is shake it off, shake shake it off, and then lead the team down, score a touchdown with this nine-yard scamper Woo. where he runs a guy, uh, uh, can't bring me that down. That guy's not making sense. So then, yeah, there's a lot of guys on the field right there, fourth quarter, first preseason game, minute 54 left, yep. that are not going to be in the NFL. No, All right. So we are certainly safety who. We are certainly judging him against players that aren't NFL. That guy just got shook out of his shoes. He's not even yeah. going to be playing the XFL. That guy's going to be selling insurance, but he had a great football career, pal. Yeah, You're in an NFL camp. Way to go, Hank. You're in an NFL camp. I mean, maybe he'll be able to work his way back, but that's going to be tough to get over in the film room and when they're judging who's going to make the team, who's not going to make the team. Well, I can't pick the guy that literally fell down from Millie Cunningham, right? Can't yeah. do that. Can't no do chance. it. Yeah, he's gone. Keep your feet under you. are not athletic enough. They'll say he's gone, even though he's probably great football players in the fucking NFL. People need to remember that for a preseason game. Mm -hmm. But reality is... Malik Cunningham had a touchdown run in college mm -hmm. that Gumpy showed me yep. last night. He broke seven tackles. Unreal. Ran for like 165 yards in this one play. Yeah. Scored a touchdown. Has more rushing touchdowns than Lamar Jackson did at Louisville. Now, he was not a Heisman player at Louisville this past season. And everybody says his arm is doo-doo. He threw a strike right there with an NFL ball. Maybe the ball was too small for him. Maybe, Maybe you need a little bit bigger ball. But I don't know how every team passes on him seven times and has a draft pick with that one play that I saw him at Louisville. Yeah. But now here's Bill Belichick, super Super genius. Just found another guy. Yep. And I guess they gave him a massive signing bonus. Yeah, he got 200 k signing guaranteed right off the bat. And I believe it was a three-year deal. And 
just not at quarterback, too. He's been playing wide receiver in training camp as well. Yeah, which was my immediate thought after watching him. It's like, okay, here we go. This is the Julian. This is Bill Belichick's <laughs> yeah, next exactly. Julian Edelman. Here yep. it is. I assume Malik can catch. He he seems to be an incredible athlete. Now, can, will he be able to pick up what Julian Edelman was to do as a Kent State quarterback, and then he gets to the Patriots? He becomes a special teamer, a safety, what? a wide receiver, a quarterback what? at what? different times. Goes on to have an incredible career and one of the greatest catches in the history of football. For sure. That one that was yeah, uh, Atlanta. Eight. So me just saying, well, he's going to put the Julian Edelman package is obviously me saying that, oh, yeah, this guy would just be able to be Julian Edelman. Not everybody is going to be able to be Julian Edelman. But with what Bill Belichick was watching last night, mm -hmm. you have to think that his brain was like, oh, well, remember what we – and Bill O'Brien's like, yeah, I do remember. And I assume Malik is going to be at least given a great opportunity yeah. to be a part of that offense – when it's all said and done. And that's the fourth quarter of the first preseason game that happens. Yes. Congrats to the undrafted free agent player who in the first preseason game, fourth quarter, proves pretty much everybody like, yeah, guy's supposed to be on the roster, mm -hmm. supposed to be on the team. That can happen the rest of the weekend. Mm -hmm. We need to keep our <laughs> yes, eyes out for those situations. On the flip side of that, the Texans, C.J. Stroud, number two overall pick, he comes out. I thought he had a good drive going. Now, people were saying, hey, good drive. He got sacked for like a minus 20 or whatever. Completes his first ball, seemed comfortable, got in and out of the huddle, seemed poised. Everything kind of went off without a hitch. There was no delay of games. There was nobody lined up off sides. There was nobody still in motion whenever he snapped the ball. Now, he was under arrest every single pass play yeah. and for Connor's point about the New England Patriots front mm -hmm. seems like they're in a much better spot than they have been uh -huh. getting to the quarterback or the Houston Texans offensive line is just terrible but that right there is a big play because people thought he wasn't athletic enough mm -hmm. to make plays whenever the play breaks down remember when he played in Georgia in the college football playoff he was running a lot and people were like well if he would have done this all year we would have maybe uh, won more games or in a different fashion he never chooses to do that it's like well first night evade some sacks seemed comfortable, looked like a professional, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it was a couple times where maybe he looked a little antsy, mm -hmm. and whenever he threw his pick, he literally pump fake to a guy, and then he learned quickly, like, yeah, this ain't Northwestern, bro. Right. You can't pump fake a guy and then go back to him. No. You, you are, you, if he doesn't move. You know, if he's, Correct. if he's double moving, maybe we can do that. But if you're pump faking, you can't be going to the same place you just faked because somebody like Mills, who's a veteran in the secondary, he saw it the whole – I mean, that was – the easiest pick of all time, mm -hmm. but that's an easy welcome to the NFL moment mm -hmm. for C.J. Stroud to learn from. I think if I'm Texans fans, I'm not that discouraged. No. I, I don't think I'm that scared. I think there was a couple moments where he got to show that he could be a guy. Like, that's one right there. I think, obviously, the game was moving a little quicker than he could imagine, but it was that because the off offensive line wasn't that great? But all the shows, all the shows. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the internet. All the internet, yeah. CJ Stroud ain't gonna make it in the yeah. NFL. Cooking him. He's a bust. Poor performance. It's like he threw a pick, got it. Mm -hmm. yep. He got sacked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely his fault. Oh, against yeah. Belichick. Definitely, yeah, against Bill Belichick. <laughs> yeah, definitely his fault. But other than that, we didn't see a lot. But there was nothing I was really that worried about. I, I was like, yeah, first game for a rookie quarterback, new new scene, new offense, new everything. I didn't think he looked that bad. There's people I feel like really making it out to be terrible, though. No, for sure. I mean, like you said, he, he never faced pressure like that at Ohio State ever. No. Like, he was under more duress last night than he was in his entire time starting at Ohio State. Like, there's going to be growing pains. You know, there's a reason that the Texans picked him number two overall. Like, they're not very good. They got a ways to go. And, like, it's going to take some time. And, obviously, in the preseason, like, they, they could have just left him in there and been like, hey, figure it out. But you also don't want him uh, going out. killed. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't want him getting sacked eight times and then being, like, four or 17 and just completely killing his confidence. Like, He's going to figure it out. He's going to be okay. And then you put, you, you know, Laramie Tunsil protecting his blind side. Like, that's certainly going to help a little bit. Like, it's, I mean, it. I think it's because he's Ohio State. I think it's because he's young. I think it's because the Texans stink. But people are being very mean to him. For I'm sure. Like, what, what people are judging that are in positions of, like, decision-making, it's like, does he look like an NFL quarterback in this first game? <laughs> like, is there, you know, because the, even something as small as, like, somebody going in motion and then having to go get set snapping the ball before that person gets set because the, everything else is kind of going on that you're worried about. Like, that's an amateur-looking thing. Right, yeah. Breaking the huddle, like, that's an amateur-looking yep. thing. Like, how you have the control of everything, that's a thing. Like, I think he looked the part. I, I, I honestly did. The pick was terrible, though. Like, yeah, that, 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 that is not going to happen, but a lot of rookie quarterbacks throw a lot of terrible balls. I didn't think it was proper to throw in a towel on him, but I, you know what I did? 
I did like the Houston Texans, the way they are they were vibing down mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Dougie yeah. Mills okay. comes out. Case Keenum. Yep. It's unfair that Case Keenum is playing yeah. third and fourth yeah. quarter Absurd. of a first preseason sure. game. He's playing a different level of football, just like Jalen Mills is, yeah. playing a different level of football than everybody else. Good for the Texans. Maybe they got something this year. Yeah, kind of like uh, I thought I was thinking about it while watching the game yesterday, like when Lombo said kind of try to judge the whole team because overall the whole team, like Texans, Kind of looked like they were Chris, like they were they were doing the right things. But when Doug Mills came in, he would like he looked like good. Yeah, and he looked like so. Obviously, he's been in the league for a lot longer, but like his decision making was super quick. He was I was like oh immediately in my head I was like Tim Bay Buccaneers need to trade for Doug Mills tomorrow. Yeah, how many of those guys are we gonna see all weekend? Yeah. Backup quarterbacks yeah. are coming. Like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they trade for Malik Cunningham <laughs> sure. right oh, now. You know what I mean? Joining us now is a man who might have a little bit more information on if any trades are going to take place over the next couple weeks as training camp happens, or will it all kind of come down to cut day? Ladies and gentlemen, friend of the program, host of the weekly wrap up with the Rap Sheet and Friends, us being the friends, he being Rap Sheet from NFL Plus. Plus. Ian Rappaport. Yeah. 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 What's up, guys? Saw NFL, I saw NFL Plus got red zone, you know, trying to bump those numbers for a big time sale well, of an app yep. and nfl network red zone and nfl network pretty big uh pretty big deal i must say oh so nfl plus has nfl network on it now full time yeah so you can stream nfl network whenever you want that it's okay. good so will you guys be splitting up all the good stuff mm -hmm. onto something like nobody watches and then something everybody else watches. So, like your uh, the coverage you had a couple weeks ago. What was it? Where all the good Feels stuff. Feels good back week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, we're yeah. back. No, right that ring a bell. Yeah, welcome back to school football weekend. Yeah. Yep. We're all together yep. football weekend. Smoking right. meat. When they had all the good stuff happening on NFL Plus. No. Yeah. I mean, that's I what would happened. say that I remember that differently. But look, NFL Plus is a great addition. Um, I would I would just subscribe. You get a lot of really good stuff on there, including now NFL Network and Red Zone, which you can stream anywhere. You could just be riding in your car with Red Zone on your iPad. It's amazing. Ooh. I love that you look down to get the proper ad read yeah. for that thing, you know, because they are pushing NFL Plus. Yep. Big time. There is a reason they're pushing NFL Plus. Yep. I happen to believe that this is all going to be a part of the sale of NFL Network of the kind of digital rights. And if you have an app that has a subscription service, oh, oh game over. in 2023, you got subscribers? Okay. Oh, man. Let's go. Smart play by Raj. But also, let's not be ruining any right. actual coverage in this okay. money yeah. play. Yeah. Please. Nonetheless, you're a money man. Welcome back, dude. Great to have you. Boy, rap. All right, so you're Appreciate at your, you're at your house. You've been on a world tour, obviously, with the wife, and then now you're back at home after your training camp tour. Uh, have you seen your kids? Have you talked to your kids? When was the last time you heard they were still alive? Everything like that? Yeah, um, so I am back. Uh, I toured the world with my wife. I went to 18 – I saw 18 different teams in training camp, which I think is a lot. Um, and my kids – there we go. That is, We're in the Adriatic Sea right there. That's Whoa. beautiful. Man, um, full-time job, that, that was, two kids yeah. in the Adriatic yep. Sea, just yeah. finding time. Chilling. That was in the middle of a 40-kilometer uh, bike ride Whoa. Uh, Whoa. in uh, Croatia. And it's great, too. We we finished uh, 20 kilometers. We sit down, give us a bottle of wine with lunch, and then we're like, cool, Like now we got to drive back. A little boost <laughs> up. Was, uh, I mean, not really boozed up. I had a glass, but still it was. Yeah, one cool. bottle like, of wine ain't going to do anything. No, yeah. to not eat no I had just one glass and maybe a little bit more. There was, you know, 11 people, so it was, well, not really. But anyway, uh, my kids are in my house. Oh! oh! How about that? When did that happen? They're, and they're alive, which is even better. Hell yeah. So th this is big news, right? When did this all take place? Um, they got home about a half hour ago. Jesus. Oh. Think about everything you have done, everything we have done. Zito's married. That's yeah. right. Foxy's engaged. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I want to go back to the Zito thing. I'm sorry to interrupt. Did, Don't worry. I'm buried not, as a father. Did you not know my address? Oh. Like, is it? You were in Croatia during it. Ah. Uh. Oh, is that why I didn't? So you knew I was yeah. going to be there. Yeah, so I, I saw where you were at on Instagram, and I was like, ah, oh, he's not going to Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, because yeah, okay. you That's told cool. us, you were like, yeah, I'm going to dump my kids off in the middle of the woods for uh -huh. about two to three months. Yep. Then we're going to go on a world tour. Then training camp starts, and they're back to school, and then we're off and running. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, that's, that's why. That's Yeah, that's why I didn't yeah. invite you. Bummer. But so yeah. 
So much has happened since you last saw them. Is everything good? Everything's good with them, yeah? Seems to be great. They had an awesome summer. Um, they played a lot of sports and did a lot of things, and they brought back a lot of medals and a lot of really dirty clothes. Yeah. Um, it's been great. This makes sense, though, because he was with his kids for 20 minutes, and then you got that text that, said, that he said, hey, can I please come on the show for, like, like 45 <laughs> minutes or so? Yeah. I, I've, yeah. I've had way yeah. too much. Yeah, I was sorry, because I was like, oh, he must have some news to break or something. Yeah. That's why he's doing it. It's like, no, no, no. He, nah. No. No, Max my, and Jude I mean, are driving me fucking what nuts. Are, what are kids. these things? I don't, I don't know, I've been in Croatia, Slovenia. Mm -hmm. Go back to camp. Jeez, go back. Their, to, their hair is like down to here. Like they all oh. need haircuts. It's ridiculous. No haircuts for seven weeks. No barbers in the woods. I guess that makes sense. Well, congrats to the whole Rapport family being whole again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems like they had fun. You had fun. A lot of people question it, but hey. You live your life, Rap. Speaking of living life, the life of the NFL is about to really start to ramp up here. You know, big time weekend, first preseason games for 30 of the NFL teams. What have you learned about the NFL right now that makes you think it's different than years past? For instance, seems like we have some actual holdouts happening where like last yeah. year, two years ago, ever since the new CBA, it was hold-ins. Like, hey, we're going to do this a little bit more civilized, going to be here, we're going to be kosher, going to be professional. Now it's like motherfuckers are out of the building. Is this what the new norm's going to be? What are you hearing about it? And are we close to a resolution on any of those? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I don't get the sense we're close to a resolution on any of them. The holdouts are uh, Zach Martin, of course, with the Cowboys, standing on principle, you know, he is, it's interesting because, like, you talk to the Cowboys people and, like, he's, like, one of their favorite players. Like, the Cowboys coaches, executives, they love Zach Martin. Um, he has been the highest paid guard for several years, but he looks at the market, feels he's undercompensated, and is taking a really strong stance. I don't sense any traction there. Chris Jones wants a new deal with the Kansas City Chiefs. He is an awesome player. Number 10, by the way. On the top 100, which was unveiled exclusively on NFL Plus, I assume you watched that. Nobody saw it. Um, See, that's nope. so that list came out. Yeah, it nobody sense. saw it. Nope. Yeah. Why are you guys? We I get you're it. trying to build something, but it doesn't mean you need to just hide all the good stuff. No, I only saw it brick by home. brick. What's no, that? Brick by brick. Brick yeah, by brick. That's yeah, how you but do it. yeah, brick by brick. Don't put the wall though that you've already built back there because people <laughs> like seeing that wall. Do the little shitty stuff that we don't know about or love. You know what I mean? Because you might as well just throw that. Into the Adriatic Sea. What is it? What's Adriatic Sea. The yep. Adriatic Sea. Because nobody even lovely. saw it. You Nobody even saw it. Nope. It's just like inside the NFL. Yeah. Inside the NFL was like. Oh, I love inside the NFL. Yeah. You haven't watched it in years. Nobody did. I know that. It was because it was on Paramount Plus. It's yep. like, we get you're trying to build your app, but also like, you can't just, you're just basically killing brands off. Mm -hmm. You have people there. You know what I mean? Can't until you get there. You know what I mean? I just don't want the NFL to well, do that. NFL is good business. I, don't do that. You I feel know? you. It's 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 a fine line. I think we're walking the line. But anyway, so Chris Jones holding out. The Chiefs have made a big offer. Obviously not big enough. Um, we'll see how close he gets to Aaron Donald money. I think that's probably the – I don't know if he's shooting to be above Aaron Donald, but, like, that's the kind of ballpark, and he is an awesome player. So we'll see if they get a resolution. And then Nick Bosa still holding out as well. Bosa is a little different though, because the 49ers are allowed to forgive his fines if they get a deal. The veterans on veteran deals, you cannot. So the Zach Martin fines, the Chris Jones fines, those are happening regardless. A little bit of a different story. But yeah, I'm, I honestly, like, I've been surprised that we've had holdouts. We hadn't had any in the past. What about J.K. Dobbins over in Baltimore? It feels like there's a little bit of smoke over there, a lot of smoke at least. Uh, is, is there some real shit going off there? He's obviously been injured a little bit. Connor reminded us all of the uh, report card that the Baltimore Ravens training facility got last year, the training room, which normally got high remarks from everybody in Baltimore. It was like, these people don't care about us. <laughs> so they, they stink. It is terrible. Terrible. What's going on with J.K. Dobbins and the Ravens? They're a different team whenever he's healthy and playing, obviously. Well, and, I mean, when he played at the end of the year last year, like, he was one of the best running backs in football. Like, that was a stretch that was really, really good. I think he would like to get paid. I know there's been some discussions about a long-term deal in Baltimore. Uh, and he's on the PUP list. Now, I don't get the sense he's that that injured. It seems like the kind of injury that would be probably okay if he ended up with a contract extension. Oh, 
you know, yeah. one of those. Like, well, good luck with JK. Um, Let's talk about one of those yeah. situations in Indianapolis then. Let's talk about Jonathan Taylor, who Shane Steichen said maybe next week, he says. He, I forget how he said it, but should be, should be back next week. Uh, then Jonathan Taylor had the eyeball emojis. And uh, I know, like, the national fans of the NFL know Jonathan Taylor to be a very talented running back and a special talent and everything like that. But in Indianapolis, there is a lot of people, not everybody, I'm not saying that, a lot of people, though, that are like, not the right, this doesn't feel like the right Mm -hmm. way of doing business. That's how a lot of Colts fans feel. Bad, poor performance out of the Indianapolis Colts last year. Bad, 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 bad. Everybody fired, pretty much. Hey, out. So now, after the season, Jonathan Taylor says, yeah, I'm going to – I signed a contract. I did that. And he knows that he didn't have his best year last year, knows that the Colts are in a bad spot. He says that in April. Then everything changes, obviously, quickly, and he decides that he wants his money now because the rest of the running backs aren't getting their money now, and then it becomes this big public situation with Jim Irsay and yada, yada, yada. It's like, yeah. I hope he gets paid, but I feel like the Indianapolis Colts and him situation is going to be tough to mend. What is the eyeballs, and what are you hearing behind the scenes? Uh, I would I would agree with all of that. Um it's really hard. And I've been, you know, obviously this has been going on for three weeks. I was actually, like we talked about last time, I was in Indy when that broke. It was crazy. Um, I feel like if you're a running back and you have the opportunity to get paid, you should do everything you can to get paid. Just because of what we have seen about the position. So he is taking a hard stance. Last year, played through injury. So his performance was obviously covered by an ankle injury that he ended up getting surgery on. He has ruffled a lot of feathers and that relationship is not good. Not good. I don't know if it could be fixed. You know, could a trade would obviously fix it. But we've also seen situations where things are bad, they're really bad, and then you kind of get together on a contract and then everyone feels better and they hug and they say, all right, let's put this behind us. What I don't know is can it be better if he doesn't get a new deal? Like going through all this, the situation has been really, really challenging and bad on all sides. And then if they just say, hey, come on in, no do deal, does he just come in? Like, that's what I – that's what I can't figure out, honestly. Yeah, none of us can either because so many different angles. You know, what's the angle? Well, one of the angles was that Jim Mercer was like, I love whales. Mm Mm-hmm. He actually said that. That was how he started the Lolita video. The country or the the animal? With an H. H. Whales. Mm -hmm. Why do you ask? But Mm -hmm. whales is what – I was yep. referring to. Anyways, he also said, I'm not trading Jonathan Taylor now. I'm not trading him in October. Publicly said that. So he's basically saying, Jonathan Taylor, like, hey, you're playing on this deal. Is that what he's saying? Is that what the Colts still think? And do they still want him in the building, you think? Do they still want him in the building? It, it has been challenging with, when he's been there. Yeah, so like him new, being away, hey, new doing culture. Rehab. New culture, yeah. new quarterback, I mean, everybody's this fine. Is like, yeah. You're really hitting on all of the reasons of why this has like been so tough to figure out because like, do you want him in the building? Well, I think Shane Steichen is really positive, took a lot of that kind of like positive mojo from Philly. Like Philly has a really good culture. And I think there's a lot of what he's trying to build in Indy. Like, you know, in Philly, you walk around, you see, if you're a player, you see your own highlights playing everywhere. It's kind of cool. It's real positive yeah, vibes. It is. And I think he's trying to do that in Indy. And then the Jonathan Taylor situation has been the opposite of positive, right? And so I think from the Colts' perspective, it's kind of like, well, you know, last year was so bad, why are we rewarding anyone? I kind of understand that. On the other hand, like, if Jonathan Taylor's going to be there, like, is that even good? Like, because I I just don't know how this gets fixed. And then if he he gets traded, that would have to be a sign-in trade with the team too, right? You would assume that he would want a new contract. Yeah, he would get some sort of – Right, some sort of new contract, and the Colts would get compensation, you know, probably pretty high compensation because he's a really good player. I just, you know, Shane Steichen is in his first coaching first coaching job. He seems like a guy who's ready. He did a great job last year with the Eagles, and then he walks into this. Yeah, yeah. Like that, you know, this is sort of how you, this is sort of how you tell, like, you know, this has been, I'm sure, really tough for him, too. So I was at training camp that one day, and this was at the beginning of the whole Jonathan T- I don't think we knew everything at that particular stage of what was going on, how unhappy he was. But, like, I, I saw Jonathan Taylor stand up, and I'm like, 
Okay. So I talked to Shane Steichen after practice started. I watched it. I'm like, hey, man, welcome to Indianapolis. Yeah, our best player fucking hates everybody. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, and you know, like, I was like, at that stage, you know, I'm like, hey, change the culture, bro. Like, I actually mm -hmm. told him, like, all right, I need you to change the culture in here. Uh, I need you to have a good offense. Go ahead and shape this rookie quarterback into something. They say his ceiling's real high. We're going to find out with you, right? Yeah. yeah. You fix Jalen Hurts. And then also, <laughs> like, uh, our best player fucking hates everybody. So I gave him, like, the classic, like, mm -hmm. good luck. Go get him. Yeah. Go okay. get him. Good luck. <laughs> you know, it was like, you're going to do great. Pete. That's a real thing. Now, he no-sewed all of it. He's thankful to be a head coach. You know, like, these are the things. Like, that's what he did. He did, like, he answered me in a super professional manner. But I was letting him, I was trying to let him know, like, hey, we all pretty much understand that you got lot of shit on your plate right now. Terrible. lot of stuff on your plate right now. So whenever they said he was going to go do rehab somewhere else, we all kind of assumed immediately, like, okay, this is somebody finally, like, giving Shane Steichen a chance, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give him a chance to institute his culture without the best player who probably has a lot of sway in, say, being miserable yeah. about everything because he's in a situation business-wise. I don't know. I like it. Hopefully, they're able to get a deal done. Money always seemingly talks. But Jim Irsay has said, brother, there ain't none of that. No. Not happening. There ain't none of that coming. So, who knows? Hopefully, they get it figured out. The running back market, though, still a very interesting one. Yeah. Connor has a question for you, Rap. Yeah, Rap, she with the other running backs. Obviously, Zeke went to New England on a visit. Apparently, it went well. He was there for a little bit. And after the preseason game last night, clear that New England needs a little help in the backfield. Do you see that one happening in these next coming weeks? Dalvin Cook, do you see that happening at some point soon just because training camp, you know, we're damn, we're less than a month away from the season kicking off now. And Kareem Hunt, is he going to end up in Indy? Yesterday, um, Michael Lombardi kind of theorized that possibly Hunt physically wasn't there just yet. But do you think that he will end up with the Colts either way? Uh, I didn't know the, the part of him physically not being there. I, I mean, he had two visits. Sounds like he had two offers. Um, you know, I think at this point, maybe the thinking is like, just wait. Uh, maybe the deal increases. Um, and I think that, you know, I would say that for all these guys. Zeke, you know, I got a text this morning, kind of check it in. And the response I got was slow motion. Which is basically like no one's in any hurry. Oh, you know? not that and he's like, slow. Okay, well, I was good. Say, right. moving in slow. Yeah, because I thought the text like no. slow motion. Like, yeah, I can't fuck where we had him. He's run. healthier and he's fast. Oh, okay. And motion is. The teams slow. think he's going to play center. Is that the issue? But he's bad center. They, they're not yeah. going to put him at center. I don't think. Can't no. do that. Him and Griff Whalen never playing center again. No, I don't think Griff Whalen, formerly of the no. Colts, Zeke, formerly of the Cowboys. But all, you said all these people just waiting for more money. Like Kareem Hunt's waiting for more money. Is that real? Well, I think waiting. To see if there is more money, you know, because reality is like you don't have to sign right now. Like if you sign in August 11th, it's probably the same as August 20th. You get a couple of weeks. The seasons, you know, running backs can can get acclimated faster than I think a lot of positions. So it's like, you know, what maybe there's an injury. Maybe someone else has a need. Maybe your leverage increases. I think they're all s sort of on the same page. And then like if you're Zeke, you've been through eight training camps. Like I don't know that he needs to go through. One of these, just get to a point where you can get there with a couple weeks to go, be in shape, and get ready to roll. So, like, you know, at some point, probably soon, all these things happen. My guess would be Dalvin is first. And I do think there's a lot of interest between him and the Jets. Um, just, you know, hasn't happened yet, so we're all kind of we're all kind of waiting. And then here's the other thing. You know, you get through the preseason, I think teams would like to see what they have, so it's not bad for them either because they just get to play the other guys they want to see anyway. Yeah, but, like... I understand what you're saying. As a human who believes in, like, team, I'm a big, like, team guy. Training camp is, like, I don't If you can get somebody in your building during training camp, even if it isn't, like, to get them in and plays and get them all the way back or whatever, just being around everybody. Learn, now, not that that can't happen when season starts and there's always going to be signings happening late in the season and those people are welcomed as quickly as possible and obviously everybody's excited about it. But, like, the situation with the Niners, I understand they're saying, like, I would want Nick Bosa in the building. I would want people to see mm -hmm. Nick Bosa. Yeah. I, I would want our rookies to see Nick Bosa. You know what I mean? Like, if Dalvin Cook's coming, like, I would like – Dalvin Cook and Aaron Rodgers to be able to talk about some plays that he likes that Aaron, you know what I mean? Yep. Like, uh, unless, yeah. you, like, that's how, but I've, that's how I view training camp because I think that's how, like, I've seen people have, like, great 
did, success. Did you go away to you went away to camp, didn't you? Yeah. In where was that? Uh, we went up to Anderson uh, for the last yes, like yeah. seven years of my career, and then rookie year we went to a place called Terre Haute uh, Rose Holman was the name. They're the engineers, real smart school, okay. real nice school. Hell yeah, really nice. I was like, this is not bad. Had an apartment. Me and Curtis Painter were roommates. So, like, nice. literally in quarterback meetings pretty much because they would come yeah. down to our room so that, you know, they could make a mess and we would have to fucking clean <laughs> sure, yeah. sure. But, like, I was in quarterback meetings there. And then you go up to Anderson and it's just this dorm and it's just a dump. And oh. it's like every no, – <laughs> good, good, good people. Very good, good people. Yeah, but – Very, place. very good the people. The building wasn't – But we're all adults, yeah. you know, and we're all humans who have houses and beds – and stuff like that that isn't that far away. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things that you like go, but it's getting away. Like that's the biggest thing. Like when remember the Titans, you know, when they hopped on those buses oh, yeah. yep. and go up to Gettysburg. Gettysburg. Gettysburg to do their like getting away together is a big deal. The same ground. I think that we're fighting on today. <laughs> yeah. They I, I think like that's a big part of training camp, but it seems like that's almost been lost with how everybody's talking about everything Ian. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I remember when I was in St. Joe's for the Chiefs a couple of years ago. Who it? Hey! Oh, There's man. proof of life! What up? Yeah. What's up, boys? What's up, boys? Oh, both of them. Hi. Hey, how was camp, boys? How was camp? We loved it? We hated it? We missed our parents or no? It was good. It was amazing. We loved it. Did you miss your parents? No. <laughs> Not really. Yes, I did. Okay, hey, shout out. You're going to get more gifts. That yep. was a smart play, but I like the way you're an outlaw. <laughs> I want to let you know that. Did you hear that your parents went on like a world tour? That's how much they missed you guys. They were uh, trying to stay occupied by traveling the world. Did you hear that? <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's, I already yeah. heard about that. Make sure they take you. You guys deserve to go there, too. Say you mm -hmm. want better uh, first-class amenities, too. Mm -hmm. They owe you. You need to know this. You're too young to know this. Them sending you. I owe you myself. <laughs> oh, okay, sick, sick. They owe you a lot, though. Yeah. Let's make sure the gifts are big. Birthday gifts, you. Yeah, need. Christmas this year should be a good one. Yep. Yeah, you deserve everything. You need to remember that, and okay? And if not, you hold out. Yeah, hold yeah. out. Say you'll go sleep outside <laughs> in the middle of the cold. To hell with them. All right? All right. Bye, guys. Scram. Max, you good work, boys. Yeah, there we go, boys. Yeah. Once again, he's seen it out. Um, well. Yeah, that haircut's in, huh? Ian, real quick. I don't know. You mean the Hoover Ian, High? Yeah, all the kids have it. I couldn't tell you which one was which here. I was going to take a guess. Yeah. The one that missed you seems to be your favorite. I'm going to say it's Max. Uh, no, Max did not miss us at all. He was the old. Max is the one with the swoopy hair. Jude has the curly hair. They're getting That's haircuts literally. Jude, so it, it, it's the same. I would have been wrong. Jude, so Jude is 17 months younger and is about the same height. Um, oh, got his uncle's know. jeans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mailman. <laughs> I mean, Lee is pretty tall, but anyway. Um, <laughs> well, well, next to you. Yeah, yeah, it depends. I mean, yeah, it yeah, that's when you're in an um, NFL team, everybody thinks you're small, you know. Yeah. When you're hanging out with Ian Rapport, everybody's like, this guy's a genius. Well, or, goddamn giant, giant over yeah. here. Watching NBA on TV. Anyway, I mean, lo love those kids there, but why is everybody, and I think they no, just. Hold, hold on. Go I'm, ahead. I'm going to what I'm saying. So I was at St. Joe's a couple years ago, oh, yeah. and I was talking to Mahomes after practice, and I'm like, do you like this? Like, camp seems. For, you know, it's an hour and a half away. Do you like this? And he was like, what I like is I go sit at a different lunch table every day. And I just go introduce myself to a new teammate. And I maybe that's like what people do. I just Rogers had never heard that. And I was like, there is something about this going away to camp. It's kind of cool. Yes. It's very – you're all you got. You know, and let alone like um, – People that have kids, you know about this. I mean, you send your kids to training camp in the woods every single year. Yep. But, like, kids, guys that have kids, and when they're at home, like, they're full-time dad. All the, So getting a chance to kind of – now, granted, there's a lot of speeches about not being there and apologize for being a bad dad, so I don't know if I should be promoting this. But, like, guys getting away from that particular thing. I've heard some people say, like, this has been – I love going to training camp. Like vacation? Yeah, I, I love going to training camp. Kind of get away from everything that's going on at home, whether it's all chaotic. So I hope that doesn't go away, but it seems like everybody doesn't really care about that because you – Teams aren't in a rush to get deals done to get these guys into camp to nope. build camaraderie. Players don't seem to be in a rush to get deals done to get in there because they're like, yeah, I don't have to go mm -hmm. to some shitty dorm. I just hope that mentality doesn't change because I think it's a big piece of like team building that is cool and you can't really just buy it or trade for it or draft it. It's something that has to be earned and I hope it just remains. You know, I, I do hope it is something that remains as somebody that I, well, I love training camp. Mm -hmm. Sounds fun. 
I mean, I had nothing to do. Yeah. So <laughs> you're shooting the shit. Body. I out. wasn't gonna say it, but I'm yeah. just a mayor up there. You know, yeah. I'm, yeah. Just, yeah. I'm yeah. having a good time. It's actually worse for you. Yeah, what's that? It's, got, it's worse for you because you got to figure out ways to fill that time. Well, yes, but also I don't have to do the shit that everybody else is doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know for sure that me going and playing cornhole is a lot better than whatever <laughs> bullshit that offensive line <laughs> mm-hmm. is doing there. So I just hope that never goes away. I hope they get deals done. Everybody, Lombardi said he thinks about two weeks left in everybody's camp is probably when all these deals happen. You know, that's probably when it all kind of takes place. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think that's probably right. Um, you know, maybe after the third preseason game, you get like that. I think it is about two weeks, maybe yeah, 10 yeah, days, two weeks. 17, like that. Well, 17 okay. days for the last. Is you, that what it is? If you play your Thursday, if they're Thursday night, third preseason game, it's 17 days until the regular season starts. Crazy. Crazy. Wow. That's, that's set, even more than I realized. You yeah. know what that's setting up for? Say it. You know. Voice of the NFL. Go look down at your phone. We are not trying to get an 18th game this mm-hmm. year. Yeah. Say that. That sets up for an 18th no, game. No, 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 no. That's not. No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, right. they're already kind of building it in. You know, it's here. Yeah, we huh? got this. We could potentially another round of primetime games. Yeah. Yeah. Three on so. Labor Day. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can also, another bye week, right? Another round primetime game. There we go. Oh, it's never going to stop. You guys are going to make all the money, and NFL Plus is still going to have zero subscribers. That's right. Hey, wow. Ty has a question for you, Rep. Rap sheet, right after Rodgers got traded to the Jets, everyone kind of had the rose-colored glasses saying, hey, they're going to win the Super Bowl, and that's really only been heightened since they were on hard knocks. And then, you know, Dalvin Cook potentially going there. But then this week, you know, there was all the the talks coming out that their O-line wasn't very good in their joint practice with Carolina. And then now a lot of people are saying, like, hey, there's a real concern here with the Jets' offensive line. Do you think uh, they're going to go address that and try to get some O-line help before the start of the season? Yeah, I would say the Jets as a team, I mean, are really good, really sound, really talented. That's the only spot where I would say there's some questions. I think the main thing is I don't know what the offensive line is going to look like. Like if Now, I saw the online, the uh, sort of viral clip of Brian Burns, you know, mm-hmm. making Mekhi Becton look bad. Brian Burks makes a lot of people look bad. Like yep. he is, he is awesome. New number. Um, and that spin move was nasty. So like that was one rep. I think there's a lot of that now where like a lot more like one rep spotlight stuff gets put online. And I think there's a lot of conclusions made of that. Um, Dwayne Brown's going to be coming back. Salah said he has no doubt that he'll be ready week one, which there's your starting left tackle. Hey, that's big news. I don't think yeah. we do that. No. Not. Put that on a sneak peek um, ticker down there. Huge. I mean, Salah said, I think quote, no doubt. Now I, yeah, I, I, that would surprise me because I thought he would take a little longer. Um, he had pretty serious surgery on his shoulder. But then, like, you know, the question of, like, Elijah Vera Tucker is awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, truly awesome. If they have an issue at left tackle or right tackle, like, does he go play tackle? I think that's, you know, you put the best guys on the field. Like, mm. the Jets' O-line might struggle now. I just want to wait and see what it actually looks like before we get to the season. Yeah, concur. We don't know who the starting five is. We don't know if they're going to be the greatest offensive line in history. Like, that, obviously the Eagles' offensive line is the one that everybody is striving for. But if you go back through time, there's a lot of great offensive lines that either are unknown, doubted, not a lot of money. Like, it's just a group coming together together in a position unlike any other on the field. They literally, if they yeah. if they find chemistry somehow and they can learn each other's tendencies, those five, any five seemingly, of ability, weight, power, well, sure. can move. It's like can be great. And then if you don't find it, though, it can take a long time to find it, you know? Because now you're, like, mixed matching. You know on Price is Right when they're trying to pick five numbers? Yeah, to win the car. Yeah, and if you get four mm-hmm. right, you got to oh, get that one. that one. Like, yeah. the amount of opportunity in there, like, from a numbers math. Like, Impossible. as if, if your left guard is shit, but your left tackle's good and your center's good, it's like, well, we can just change this one. What if this next one's bad? Yeah, you know? and then of course. What if this guy gets hurt? It's like you can really start looking for almost ever for it so we hope everybody has it figured out Cincinnati Bengals last year yes eight games it took them for that Mm -hmm. offensive line to figure it out and they got much better 
than what they had been. I assume they're only going to get better. That's where you win games, though. So mm -hmm. it is a little bit of a scary thought mm -hmm. for Jets fans, I'd assume, as it comes back down to reality and down to earth that although you got a quarterback who seems to be better than he's ever been, you got weapons, you got a defense, you got a coach, you got a culture, right. you got the media buy-in, mm -hmm. but then it might come down to just basic football. Mm -hmm. Can you block fucking anybody? Yeah. We yeah. shall see. That is uh, – that's a real good storyline. Last question here for you. Rap from yeah. Tone Dukes. Yeah, Ian, I saw that you retweeted a tweet from Mina Kimes that was kind of calling the Israeli insiders thieves stealing from thieves. That'd be, I believe, Dove and JPA and ML and RKX and all and football. Uh, you got you're, you're calling them the Israeli insiders because they were all in Israel at the same time. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Just clarify. Yeah. Yes. What's your, uh, what's is that your, true? What's your, yes. What's yeah, your, one of them was stuck over there because yeah. their wallet Wall got, got stolen. stolen. <laughs> What's your problem with those Twitter accounts, Ian? Yeah, that, they might all be the same person. It's possible. There's that's what we're. That's why we're kind of piecing this whole thing together. But what is your deal with them? That's a good question. That's, yeah, yeah. Because I like them. I mean, what I was wow. trying to do, I just Greg Rosenthal is a good friend. He does a really good job on his, you know, free agent article that I definitely read before retweeting. Um, <laughs> I just liked how Mina Kimes, you know, called attention to the work that Greg does, and so I wanted to retweet it because Greg is a good colleague. Um, and I wanted everyone to see his uh, list of however many free agents that was. You're no, full of shit. Yeah, you just shit eating grin already. I, it is no. interesting. Hey, this next generation here of um, news accruers, I will say, because they accrue information. Yeah, right. And, and you know, kind of just gather news and then they release it through their Twitter accounts. It's a new angle. It's not an insider. No. It's not a pundit, but kind of. Mm -hmm. A little bit of punditry yeah. Acting, yes. in the news. They're not really bloggers, but kind of, mm -hmm. because they're giving their takes. And then sometimes not letting people know the context of the things that they're saying and starting a, times. a <laughs> shit storm. <laughs> yeah. You know, starting an absolute shit storm. But I appreciate that they're hustling, trying to make it out there. But there's people that do not like them in the football world, and I'm looking it's at It's hard, them. man. Whoa, it's hard it's, what? No, I mean, it's just... I, hard I, to like them? I, I think what, about this a lot. That's what he said. That's what he said. Foxy, what do these guys deal? They're just haters. I mean, they're haters. I love Ari Mirov, and well, he no, basically no, 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 started this. He's not in here, Foxy. Ari is not Ari in here. Ari Mirov is the godfather yes. of this particular okay. style. Is he the originator? No, he's an aggregator. Yeah, yeah. Not he, of the... He always gives great credit. Exactly. He he's a class act. Yeah, not, he not is the class, 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 class. Foxy, you hear all these haters get I, I mean, they're just trying to be like Ari. Can you blame them? No, no. I'm trying to be like Ari. Yeah, you know exactly. what Ari looks like. Do you know what any of these guys look like? They're all the same person. I met Ari once. Once. Yeah, yeah, he's at everything. Did, yeah. Yeah. He's working hard. He's at everything. Yeah, and Foxy's saying this, but who, who does Foxy root for? The Lions, and what do what do we think about Lions fans? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? So, I don't even know why this guy's piping up back there. <laughs> Lions are brand new Lions. Hell yeah, this yeah. is the year. Foxy's and hot, and he tried to put the best team in the He tried to put words in our mouth. Anyways, rap. Sounds like you're on their side, and I just want to let you know, I'm not happy. You're a hating ass hoe. Just, I didn't say anything. just like I these guys right anything. here. I, it's challenging when you, I mean, look, those guys do give credit. Not always. No, they don't. They do not. Well, sometimes they do. Yeah, well, sometimes they give Every I, once in a while they give credit. Yeah. Well, they don't. I don't. It's just, I don't know the alternative. I mean, I mean, look, I don't know why they exist, just being honest, um, but I don't know the alternative. So. Cover the game they love. <laughs> Eliminate them. <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah. They cover the game they love. Yeah, that's fair. I will say, every once in a while, you know, those things will pop into the old algae, and it'll be a big, long, wild tail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I'll read it and I'll yeah. like, I didn't know that. I did not know that. Thank you for bringing that into my life. Well, and that's what's nice is if you just search a little bit longer, uh, either Rappaport or, like, Schefter or someone tweeted that, like, four or five minutes before that. <laughs> And then they're just not credited there. So you're like, oh, shit, this guy actually is plugged. Now, I will say, let's follow up with that for your world of insider news. Okay. It feels like now you break news, right? Somebody, let's say it is Ian Rappaport. Yeah, of course. Yeah. See, yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. yeah. Most Woo. of the time. Ian Rappaport just broke some news, okay? Then uh, every other network, let's say ESPN or Fox or NBC, they'll say that their person confirms that becomes the news now. Yeah. The news is like Schefter confirms report that blah, blah, blah. And that is like how it – or Fox will have Jay Glazer confirms report that blah, blah, blah. Or now Schultze. Yeah. Of Schultze, course. Wow. Jordan Schultz, who's on uh, 
uh, speak, 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 or whatever, in a suit at the desk. Yeah, Look, looking good. Looks like Clay. Sit. Jeez, Louise. In a good way. Come Come on. On. Let's guys take that what? back. Jeez. Let's you guys take that back. Yeah, it's not a compliment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought in it was. In a geez. good way. Yeah, he looks Come like on. he's got smooth skin like Con Clay. Connor, what thought, world? Connor thought he was watching Celebrity Deathmatch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> Feel good think, Friday, dude. I, I, you guys are some hate I, as oh, my God. oh, for shoot, thought that was a compliment. <laughs> yeah. Did not think that was. They, they grabbed his body from Madame Tussauds and stuck him on the speech. Uh, That's not a compliment. How's the wax? Anyways, you should see what you look like. You should see. Did you see what you look like on Jabba today? No. Jabba has a certain super pale setting on. Oh, I'm super white. Wait till you go back and see it. You are glowing. Okay. Are okay. Not like Clay, but you are. I wish. Anyways, is that the new thing for in We love Schultz here. Love yes. him. He, seeing him at that desk was yeah, wild. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. It's Holy awesome. shit. It was wild. I did not expect <laughs> All right. All right. Let's, uh, it was the lighting in there. We love you, Schultz. Congrats. Schultz. 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 Schultz, you need to get you a Thunderdome. Sit you at our desk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go Sit you at out. our desk. That would be awesome. Take take the private plane. Yep. Fly on in. Mm -hmm. Do your thing. But that's a new world, right? Isn't it? And these aggregators, accruers of information or whatever, they are... Um, <laughs> They're doing the same, but they're just saying that we have confirmed when a lot of people are thinking they fucking know nobody. Yeah. They are just, they've seen it on two different Bingo. reports. So, like, I don't, right. I'm not bashing that, that hustle of all those different accounts who might be the same, the same account. We're mm -hmm. not 100% sure. We have no idea who any of those people are. But that is the game now, right? Isn't it? That's kind of the game. I guess. I mean, th what you described earlier about networks having their own people confirm like that should happen to me first of all that's why all these people are employed second of all there shouldn't like let's say we report something and then i don't know espn reports it later whatever they should confirm it make sure it's right and report it themselves like i have no problem with that at all they do it fine we do it the same like everyone should credit their own person that's literally why we are here whether honestly whether you break the news or not and if you didn't credit the person who did move on. It's the other stuff where it's just kind of like repeating. I don't know. It's This is our world now. It, it seems to be there's more than ever. Um, I don't really know what to do with it. So, um, like, I think it doesn't... they get a lot of retweets. I think it doesn't... They, a lot of action. <laughs> they, um, which, by the way, they should be proud. Yeah. That's not easy to build. I, I think it's going to be tough for new insiders to kind of... You know what I mean? Like, I think you already established, you know? Shefty already mm -hmm. established. I think it's going to be tough for like a new one. Like Schultz, he's trying to do it right now, but there's so many potential Ton. news breakers. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to get too like um, in our conversation, but like, I'm happy we started our podcast when we did, as opposed yeah. to when the podcast became like just 10 million of them. Yeah. It's like, Is that what, did you, you, you guys were a podcast first? I was a podcast. I had a podcast while I was playing. So like, yeah. That's where it all started. Oh. You know what I mean? I don't even know if I knew what a podcast was back then, but yeah, and that's why you know you're pushing this NFL Plus without the understanding it's never going to work. But I love that you do it. You know, work. I absolutely love that you do it. But yeah, it's a weird time. It's a very weird time because you would a lot of people would say, well, who cares if Raptor, a Rappaport, or Schefter are getting credit? It's like. Well, these guys commit their entire yeah. lives. Yeah. To these. Yes. Bingo. This, this guy is a robot who his wife sees at least, one at least hour a week. Care. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, but I think we're trying to showcase that. Like, although you are not a blue collar human being, you have no idea what a callus is on your hand. You do work your dick off, which yep. mm -hmm. should be respected yeah, by people that enjoy hardworking people, you know? I appreciate that. I, I play golf, so calluses, I'm, I'm obviously that's. Beat your My hands are all calloused. Yeah, yeah, I'll bopping too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Smacking your kids around. Hey, let me go golf a little bit. Get this calluses built so I can do Rocky Road tonight as I bop myself. All right, we appreciate you. Uh, so thankful you join us, and uh, you're the man, Rap. You truly are. Enjoy that Rocky Road tonight. That's right. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not. Thank you guys. No, I don't. Ladies Thank you. Goodbye. Ian Rap, Yeah, Rap G. All right, let's get to a break. Love. Ooh, oh, love it's that. good to see Rap.
Tone, why'd you bring that up? I didn't know you were going to bring up being a hating ass hoe. Well, no, no. I just brought it up because, you know, I was scrolling Ian's Twitter to see what he's reporting on. Oh, so you're just being a journalist. Okay. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I was aggregating info from his Twitter account like they do. Foxy, we are outnumbered. Yeah, I think the best time. thing they do is take someone else's video off the team's YouTube or social media site, like rip it, upload it as their own, put their watermark on it, and then yeah. just pass it around. That drives me nuts. That's yeah, that tough. Is, that is, it's, oh, is it Fox? They do, those are things I do not like. Yeah. Right. I will say, if it's one person, I'm completely flipping my take, and I think it's one of the most <laughs> impressive things I've ever seen. Yeah, it's a lot. It take a lot of work to yeah. run four different accounts stealing information from everybody. Yeah, the thing beef. I also don't love is I feel like these those accounts are more susceptible to like a Barry McCockiner situation because like they'll just take anything and run with it because that shit does get retweeted by a bunch. Like all those all those tweets hit, so it's like you know it's just a matter of time before you're seeing something where it's like oh, okay, well we're all just getting got here. I'm guessing seventeen. 17 years of age to about 20 years of age, the people that are running those accounts. You think? Mm. That's what I think. And I think they are they should be very impressed with their hustle, the success mm -hmm. that they've had. I do believe they should potentially, you know, give a little hat tip every once in a while, yeah. a shout out every once in a while. Or a face to the Twitter. Yeah, let us know that you're a human. Yeah. Who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real name. The video thing where they were. They, I haven't seen that lately, though. That was something I think it stopped, hasn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I do not remember the video. The last thing from, like, uh, not. The video tweets. thing was very frustrating, though. Yeah. Because, yes. like, a lot of hard work goes into editing a lot of those videos. The, water, the watermark may have stopped, but they're still taking other people's videos now, uploading them as their own to get the views. Which I don't think anybody gives a fuck about now at this stage, because it's like you do that. You can tweet video, obviously. They make that very easy for people to do, so you don't have to steal views from people who are creating content. But I don't think there's anybody at this stage who really gets that banged up about people sharing their video on Twitter, except for, like, the NFL. No, the watermark <laughs> stuff that is Pending. fucked up. Yeah, big time. The watermark stuff's fucked up. Like, I thought that was a little rude. But once again, they're giving me some information every once in a while, sure. so I appreciate their services. Not as fucked mm -hmm. up as the ricochet shot that Schultz got. But... Schultz just got killed. by Not by me. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you. No, it wasn't. You watched, you read that Jack Carr book right there mm -hmm. that's sitting on the desk? Yep. And he's like, you woke up with a headshot mentality. No. Mm -hmm. And I, Schultz got one right to his clay dome. Just because Schultz is going to be the next lead in a Wallace and Gromit movie. All right. Does let's it get to a break. It's my fault. There's or no reason for it, or Can we get Schultz on, on today? He needs to defend himself. He does. He's done great on team. We're happy yeah. for him. He's probably getting ready for speak as we speak. Brian. Speak. Speak. We're back in five minutes with some more terrible show. Mm -hmm. It's a good hour. What? Yeah, I think it was yeah. really good. I don't think so. Yeah. Broke down the games last night. Ian gave a lot of good information. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great hour. Woo! Oh, oh, oh. Just got to make the adjustment. You know? Exactly. Make the yep. adjustment. Yep. That second guy is always a lot better in golf and in shooting. Corey Allen. Amen. Man. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Take five. 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 I'll get it out of your system now because I'm going to annihilate your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. We can't get lapped. That is a hey, pack. Can't, lap. can't get lapped. Boys, nobody can get lapped. Let's go. Team on three, team on me. One, two, three, two. Ah, uh, you're all in trouble. Actual. You think you'll lap one person, two people, or how many people? I say at least one. Laps one person will donate 25000 to a charity of his choice. If he laps two people, it'll be $50,000 to a charity of your choice. And if you don't lap anybody, it's on you to give 10,000. Deal. All right, here we go. Hey, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Good luck. Hey, boys. Let's go. go, baby. Let's go. Warm up them tires. We warm up them tires. We warm up them tires.
You are awesome, dude. You know, there's professionals at things. There's professional walkers, believe it or not. They're in the Olympics. They're speed walkers. They walk better than we do, even though every human knows how to walk. There's professional eaters, okay? Every human on earth eats. They're better than you are at eating somehow. Everybody drives. This motherfucker drives. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Tony. Yes, sir. Didn't laugh any of us though. Ten grand, two donation, but he definitely smoked us. Hey, that's called getting smoked by smoke. Cheers, NHRA in Indianapolis, Labor Day weekend. It's gonna be a blast. He's going 330 miles an hour. He's going 280 miles an hour. They're racing all day. A lot of boozing, I think, in the crowd. I've been there a couple times, yeah. fucking stinks and the fact that you listen we are very very thankful for it. aj never cease to amaze me with your toxicity pal you got a couple of these god <laughs> damn it <laughs> what the fuck are you doing hello beautiful people welcome back to our humble abode the thunderdome on this feel good friday august 11th 2023, our tour of this program starts now. Football! Happened last night, two preseason games that we have to talk about with the talks table. At Boston Connor, who's... New England Patriots are completely defeated on the season. <laughs> no. His, his mullet, though, is undefeated. Uh, at Ty Schmitz, it's next to him. One half of the hammer. Dad! Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. All the boys in the back. Great work this week, boys. Here we go, hey. boys. Great work this week, boys. And joining us now is a man who's in an attic in Ohio, a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup winner, the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. Oh. It's all a bug. Doom bug. Yeah. 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 Tom Tom swallowed a jelly bean. <clears throat> yep. Piece of gum. What's going on here? We got to get... We got to get this debugged this place. Yeah, now the bug fall from the sky. Yeah, it's starting to happen. Yeah. Before a season, we got to get this entire, what's that ball? They do yeah, a bug bomb. Uh -huh. yeah, a bug yeah. bomb. Drape the thing over Put the entire Thunderdome. Put a big circus tent over yeah. here. Yeah, because yeah. yesterday, remember, there was a spider in mid. Where are you? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah he sprinted yeah. away. It's nothing compared to, and Nick brought this up, there was a mouse at our old studio. Yeah. And you remember Foxy? <laughs> little. <laughs> yeah. 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 You guys see the mouse? <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Hate those things. Can't just squash that like a bug. Did you kill it? You could. Did you kill it? Where is it? It's gone? Okay. Okay. All right. Mouse! <laughs> Foxy, literally. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Never seen anything like it. No. Think, this is a mouse for your computer. Smaller than oh, much. much yep. For sure. Tiny. What do you do with it? Like, you, you can't just step you, on it. Cut you, your you head just, off. You just don't represent the state of Michigan like that. <laughs> yeah. Pick it up by its tail. Because it's going to be hard. Hole. Yeah. No, you kill it, you, you, you put it back in the hole, and then all its friends know is, hey, we got to get the fuck out of here. You don't have to do any of these things. What I know you, you can't do is do what you did. Well, With that being said, need to blow up all the bugs in here. Can't yeah. have that happening whenever we're on ESPN. No, no. absolutely not. No. Join us now, ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. Yeah! AJ, what's going on? So you swallowed... June bug. You swallowed yeah. a, a legit... Big old June bug. We yes. can, can we run it back and see if we can see that actually happen on video? I think it's going to be like the shoelace thing with Ocho Cinco, yep. but there's a... Uh, I saw it. <laughs> it was moving so fast. Yeah, these bugs are different out here. I'm sorry about it. They're not little bitch-ass Ohio bugs. Yeah. You know what I mean? These, these are Indiana bugs. Okay, they're flying get that, around. Get that place fogged. You got to fog that. You got to probably shut it down for the weekend. Get it all, you know, fog that thing up. You come in Monday, it feels good. It's, make, actually, it's actually a really good call. We're going to be off a couple Fridays coming up because yep. we do have to do a lot of things yeah. over the three-day weekend to this place. We are going to add blowing up all these bugs that have been yep. living here since Jesus was the home. Be of careful, place. though. If you do do that, people come in and make meth while you're gone. Yeah. Whoa, so. What? Well, I was going to suggest getting the bodies out from under the stage that Bill put there. That might be a good start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He probably poured concrete over him. Oh, there was. You can see it. Yep. You can actually oh, see here. it. Please run back. Please you can actually, run back. You can see it. 
There Boom, right is. there. Yep. See that? that thing oh, torpedoed see, my throat. We can see your reaction. We don't, I don't know if we can see the actual bugs. Well, you, that's throat. on you. Sorry, you got those weak baby blue eyes. You know what I mean? You're yeah. not able to see as well because they're oh. not as dense as these green ones we got right here. Yeah. We saw right here. Okay, 4K. Not for long, by the way. No. Not right. for 4K. Not, not for long. We seen that thing torpedo my throat, dog. You know what I mean? That ain't on a mission. Thanks for laughing in my face about it. No, I mean, now, now I do see it. So I, I, I appreciate you fighting through all the reverse. Ready? And, and dip. Boom. Oh, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. These bugs these days. Yep. Yeah, you don't see that happening to Greeny. We better get that cleaned up. Well, his office, that studio doesn't have any yeah. bugs flying out of the ceiling like we got around here. They also don't have any softies like we do with Mitt with the spider thing and yeah. Foxy uh, with the mouse uh, thing. And a Should we let the belt. crows in eat the bugs? Yeah, yes. maybe. Maybe. Smart. That is what hey, we I hate do. To I hate to tell Foxy, but his house is probably teeming with rats because I know they, rats. they're oh. scurrying them out of rats and mice because they have to scurry out of those fields because they're building those giant oh. Amazon factories and oh, yeah. plants behind his house. No. So they have to go somewhere. Yeah. They went right to Foxy's pantry. I have a cat that protects the house from all mice. Yeah, hey, a pup okay. cat is not doing anything. Yeah, Whoa. he's a dog. Right? He's actually yeah. a cat, a fat one. He, he just sits outside Whoa. and is yeah. old. Nonetheless, let's move along here, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, big round of applause for me handling that bug. Congratulations, Pat. <laughs> okay, the way I did. And that's also doing a little brainstorm of how we make this place a little better. Exactly. Yeah, before we debut on ESPN for the whole world to see. Yep. Happy we figured that out, even though it seemed like somebody was against us the entire time. Yeah, a little bit. Interesting. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, last night's football. We had football, two of them last night. Mm -hmm. The Patriots completely defeated, losing to the Texans. Sure. Ohio State product, C.J. Stroud, got his first NFL action. Obviously, first series ends up with him throwing a pick. He pump fakes to one place, and then he throws right back to that place. Welcome to the NFL. You can't do that. This isn't Illinois. This isn't Rutgers. This isn't Northwestern. That's Mr. Mills, and he's played in a Super Bowl, I do mm -hmm. believe. An absolute dog, that guy. So that was a learning lesson. He was able to evade some sacks. He seemed to be confident, poised, threw the ball around, got a big-time sack where he got killed, was running for his life a lot. I didn't think it was that bad of a debut, but boy, a lot of people are saying this guy's going to stink in the NFL because of what happened early <laughs> in this preseason football game, A.J. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, yeah, the preseason's so weird, and you're right. Like, he threw that one late, that pick that he threw, obviously mm -hmm. threw that thing a little bit late. Can't do that. Uh, so we'll see. Hopefully, you, I guess what you want to see is progression from the first game to the second game. And does he does he make an improvement? That's what we're looking for. Yeah, I think um, I think it was Deion Sanders, a video I saw where he said, don't waste a mistake. And I don't think I've ever heard that frame that way. Like, let's not waste a mistake. Like, if it happens, cool. Let's learn from it, though. Let's not just, like... Let's Waste not do it again. Yeah, yeah, let's make sure we let's hey, let's hone in on this is exactly what happened, and this is why it won't happen again. Him moving though, evading some sacks there, 99 was coming in hot a lot. Now oh, yeah. we don't know what the Houston Texans yeah. offensive line is gonna be. We hope they will be better, but him being able to get the edge, outrun some people, I think that's a big deal for what was being said about him coming out of college, right, AJ? Yeah, no question. Yeah, because he he is able to move. He just didn't do it very often. He did it in the Georgia game, obviously, his last game he played there. But, yeah, oh, they also didn't have both their starting tackles in the lineup too, didn't they? Yeah, which affects some things. You know, Laramie yeah. Tunzel's not going to play in the first preseason game, especially after the deal he just signed with how long he's been in the NFL. So hopefully that will affect it. But I saw some stuff out of CJ that made me think, like, yeah, he's right where he needs to be, you know, right where yeah. he probably is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, preseason number one, new head coach. Bringing some juice. I like what D'Amico's doing, obviously. No delay games. No illegal shifts from the quarterback. Huddle in, out, you know? Yeah. There was Let's no just look like a professional operation. That's what you want it to look like. Yes, I think so, too. And I don't think, like, a lot of fans think of it that way. No. Because I said, they take it for granted. I think they take it all for granted because it does seem to run so well during the season. You're right. Like, there's a lot of moving parts in preseason, no question. And so I thought CJ handled all that. What, like, if you're going through the checkbox of what CJ Stroud did well, and there's going to be people like, Oh, he broke a huddle. That's good. It's like, it is. It's a big deal. That is good. That's what he didn't have to do it in college. That is, that is good. That True. He did. You know, he was able to evade sacks. Uh, okay, welcome to the NFL. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's what we're... Big deal. That's what we're saying. He completed some balls, was on the money with a couple of things, was on the run, completed the pass. Okay, he can do that. Now, was he under duress every single play, seemingly? Yes. So was he getting a little antsy, a little bit quick, probably making people think he's not ready yet? Maybe. But also, I don't think it was the end of the world there. On the flip side, the Patriots' defense. Now, once again, first preseason game, 
Can't take away too much. Mm -hmm. Lombo, though, said you can sense some trends, though, from these preseason games. Last year, we weren't able to really get to the quarterback, right, or stop the run? Uh, we couldn't stop the run at all. We had a decent amount of sacks. Judon had 15. Oh, yeah, 15. but focused on D-line, right? Focused, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last night seemed to be dominant. And that dude who we thought was maybe a 45-year-old man out of Georgia Tech, uh, he seems to be the real deal. And they got a rookie third-rounder out of Sacramento. Yeah, uh, Sacramento State, Marte Mapu. He didn't play last night, but they're saying that he could start this year either at safety or linebacker. This dude's a rookie, got drafted this year, not playing in the first preseason game. Like, no, nah, we're going to rest this guy. He's on the bench. They like, they like what they see early, obviously. Yeah, Bill yeah. Belichick loves that fucking yeah. guy. Because yeah. that Keon White, we saw him play last night. Yeah, and he and he was picked first ahead of him. Play. Marte Mapu, yeah, Gonzalez first round. Mapu was actually on the sideline with a play sheet next to Steve mm -hmm. Belichick, like checking wow. calls and like figuring everything. They're saying he's like next level smart defensively. Up on the Patriots after last night, down on the Patriots after last uh, night? Definitely up. I am kind of worried, not worried, but I am bummed I didn't see anything really from the offense. It felt like they ran maybe eight plays and none of them are going to be plays that will run during the season, but seeing all the rookies play, most of them played very well and there was one, you know, late around uh, offensive lineman that played well and a lot of guys that were moving around. Like I, We were talking about that with uh, Rap Sheet a little, with like the, you know, guards moving to tackles, any of that stuff with the Jets O-line. Bill drafted a lot of guys that, yeah, they're center, guard, or tackle, but they all played different spots last night. Like, one of the centers we drafted played left tackle for two drives. So, seeing that also gives you help. Yeah, to Connor's point, Marte Mappe was charting plays for when Steve Belichick was calling them. And AJ, I, I assume that's probably weird for a, a rookie third-rounder to be charting the plays there in the first preseason game like that? Uh, I mean, honestly, maybe not, because if they like the dude and they want to keep him involved, but not put him out there and, and risk him getting hurt, it's a good learning situation so i'm sure the coaches came to him like hey this is what we want you to do kind of get in our heads and, and kind of understand what our what the game plan looks like and what we do there i'm just learning this dude i guess he's huh oh yeah yeah so what round was he taking third third yeah. out of uh he was the big sky conferences defensive player of the year last year oh yeah there we go he don't fuck sounds around. like a patriots guy huh yeah, yeah, drafting the third the guy is already going to be a superstar probably another guy that's a patriots guy is an undrafted free agent that they give two hundred thousand dollars guaranteed to which is more than like fifth sixth seventh fourth rounders <laughs> are making but he didn't get drafted by anybody 259 picks malik cunningham out of louisville he had more rushing touchdowns than lamar jackson in louisville couldn't throw the ball worth a fuck is what the internet said about him i didn't watch a lot of louisville last year i apologize for that go cards but this guy lit it up last night and now we're just assuming he's going to have a role in the offense because Bill Belichick saw this and has had a lot of success with guys who are former quarterbacks in college, who are great athletes, who seemingly are just footballers, which this guy is. When he gets his head almost ripped off, decapitated at the 45-yard line, he goes, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Then he gets up, makes another play, leads him all the way down to a touchdown. How does he not get drafted? And what do you think yeah. Bill Belichick was thinking while watching this guy? He had to – I mean, Bill has to just – in his, he got a, a touchdown dropped right here, too. First oh, yeah. off, that should have been a great highlight for him. I, I felt for him on that one. And honestly, watch his reaction. I like that he didn't freak out and lose his mind and, like, throw his hands up. Like, what are you doing? you got to catch that. I like that he – he had a good reaction, too, as a young kid because he knows how big a deal it is if he would have thrown a touchdown there. Well, Ian bounces back, drives him down, scores a touchdown. Yeah. He thought Look. it was coming. Here we go. Now, uh, all right, let's get yeah. in here and let's run some people over. Let's not go down. Let's well, hey into the end zone man. to make this thing 20-9. to nine. Hell yeah. 154 left in the fourth quarter. Mass holes celebrating all around. Offensive linemen saying, I'm not spiking a ball. I don't know if Bill Belichick wants me to do that. <laughs> yeah. I like nice little pass off. That that left uh, tackle and guard had a nice pass off 20, on the little yeah, 25 25's effort at the goal line makes me sick. Did you see Buddy just get shook out of his actual Where? shoes right yeah. bang, Boom. down? There, but here's, oh, that's, what, that's not this. effort though, Diggs. He was twenty no. fives right there. At the uh, end. Let me see, well Diggs also though, down. you know these guys are scared to death of getting targeting Watch. calls too. Oh yeah, I guess you're right there. I don't know. Right, guy ripped off a helmet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think a lot of these he, he guys. Knew he are, didn't have a chance. Yeah. I don't think a lot of these guys are thinking about targeting calls or anything else at the end of these preseason games. <laughs> Bro, I, I think yeah. they're, they're so tired. They're so tired. They're just trying to survive. Probably. Do you see that guy just rip his helmet all the way off his head? Straight off. I was watching it live. Like, this is awesome. This guy's not. Yeah, I love that he popped up. And then did you think to yourself immediately, that guy's not going to be in the NFL? Ooh. Okay, sweet. If you don't even know to let go of that thing, <laughs> like you're probably not <laughs> yeah. going to make a lot of good decisions. Who knows? Maybe you'll be able to learn how to do that in the XFL moving forward. Speaking of helmets, I know it was the other game. Did Kirk Cousins wear his helmet the entire game? 
Yeah, I saw that, that Kirk Cousins was dialed in. And I hear yep. the call. He just wants to hear the call. Yeah, game. I, he could have had I just mean, an earpiece, but he, you know, wants to feel like he's in that moment. Game day. Especially in Seattle, he wants to feel the noise, you know. There's the mental reps that can happen. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to see a lot of that game. No. And that's – Seattle Seahawks fans – You miss a lot. Have been averagely good to this show. Drew Locke played yeah. well. You yeah, know what I mean? Sure. I feel like Seattle Seahawks fans having – Yeah, he was like uh, – what was he? 17-24, yeah. I think. Yeah, like 195. Yep, yep, something. Two tugs. Yeah. First series, not great. Then he comes back, strike! Yeah. Nice ball. Great ball right Mullins there. played well, too. And um, – Threw a good ball to Bobo. Jake Drew, Bobo. Dang, later. That's a strike. Beautiful. That's a fucking strike right yeah, there. Yeah, this one here. Drew started in the NFL. People forget that. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. yeah. He's rapping on the sideline. Yeah. Look at him there. He looks very, like – he just looks confident in the pocket. He looks good. Yeah, call that bitch my bodyguard. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my bodyguard. bodyguard. Drew Locke was going to be competing with Geno Smith whenever he got traded is what everybody else thought. Mm -hmm. Then Geno went on to lead the number one offense in the NFL, and then he just got a new payday. Drew Locke's there. Geno's still there. Pete Carroll always – competing and chewing his gum. Seahawks are always going to be good under Pete Carroll is what we think now. Yeah. Although last year we did have doubts going into the season. <laughs> we apologize. Yes. Right. Let's pivot away from last night. Let's pivot away from preseason football. Okay. Sure. Let's talk about the lives that are playing football. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's talk about the people that are in charge of making sure that the game lives on forever. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the serious stuff of football. Health. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is the first ever Chief Medical Officer for the NFL. Friend of the program. A man who brought the Guardian Caps to the NFL, which made all old school football players pumped, but seemingly only going to be the tip of the iceberg with safety. Why are we getting concussions in practice when we don't need them? Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Alan Sills. Yay, yeah, yeah, doctor! Doc, good to see you. Hey, thank you. Hey, Pat, good to see you. And by the way, congratulations. I hear that you're a uh, new dad. So congrats to you. Is, uh, is anybody getting any sleep at your house these nights uh, right now? Yeah, Doc, it's an interesting thing, huh? It's just a whole new schedule. This is just, uh, you just kind of get dropped in there. I didn't do enough research, Doc. I, I don't think <laughs> I, I looked into it enough. I didn't know what I was signing up for, but I don't think I could have ever understood truly what it feels like. Like yesterday, I get home, you know, she's laying down on her diaper change, getting her diaper changed, you know place she likes hanging out there she doesn't mind you know having uh letting the body air out sure sure you know, she oh, yeah. is a yeah. she's a free spirit so she enjoys uh <laughs> the changing table there in the living room that we have and i get home and she like sees me out of the corner of her eyes and she starts making like ah! and like kicking and everything mm -hmm. and then she has like a little smirk and i like literally almost melted through my fucking house it was like such an amazing feeling i don't think you could ever understand that unless you had it and then on the flip side you know, I don't think you fully understand what the fuck is about to take place when that baby comes into your world for the first three weeks either. So it's an honor. I thank you for the compliment. And my wife is kicking so much ass. Speaking of kicking ass, the NFL had 6.3 million viewers for the Hall of Fame game, Doc. Okay? That's absurd. That's more than every other sports finals. The NFL is only going like this and this and this. Is every decision that you're making basically for the future of players and the future of the game? And do you feel true pressure on that for not fucking up the game too much away from football, but also making sure it survives forever because we're in a golden era once again, Doc? Yeah, well, absolutely. Most We have a terrific game played by the most amazing athletes in the world, and um, that's exactly what we're about, is how do we make sure that this game not only continues, but gets better and better over time, so that it, it is something that remains a force and, and something that, that people can participate in. And so, uh, you know, our commissioners has said before, and I'm a, I'm a big advocate of this, Pat, you can make the game both safer and more exciting. Those are not mutually exclusive. And if you look back, I mean, football has always been about innovation, right? Whether you talk about the forward pass or the introduction of the, the plastic shell helmets or so many different things that football has always evolved and it, and it should evolve as we learn more and as we know more, as we understand more, we have an obligation to try to make it better for those that come behind us so that the game will persist and will remain as great as it has been. Yeah, it's not easy. Those are some tough decisions that have to be made, obviously, as it goes. And old school guys like this particular home plate face who, uh, you know, used to ride out to Adam's apple, oh, yeah. you know, aren't always going to fully understand that. So that is a full thing that you have to battle with, obviously. But AJ, has a question for you, Doc. Doc, what uh, you, you mentioned, you can we can make the game safer and more exciting. What you have any examples? Like, how do you do that? It seems like a tough task. 
Yeah, I'll give you an example. If you looked last year, one of the things we're starting to do is quantify head impact. So, so we're not just looking at concussions, but we're literally looking at how many times during a game does a player hit his head. And last year's Super Bowl, you talked about Kansas City and Philadelphia. I think every one of us would say that was a great game, right? It was a great football game. It was incredibly entertaining. It was exciting. It was well played. It had everything in it that you would want to see from a competitive football game. That game had one of the lowest rates of helmet contact of, of games that we saw played last year. And I bring that up to illustrate this point to say you can play an incredibly exciting, fan-friendly, competitive brand of football that doesn't involve using your head, for example. And so that's where I think we have to be looking is how can we preserve all the elements of the game that are exciting and that fans love and that players love and that we all want to see continue but also work to, to decrease injury and, and improve the margin of safety. And, and that, to me, is what our challenge is. Hey, Doc, I think what everybody's scared of is when you make one rule, like, well, this is going to lead to. You know, like, well, if they're willing to do this, what else are they willing to do? Do you guys keep that in mind about the potential, like, PR ripple effects? Like, if we decide, you know, to have a Mickey Mouse kickoff that every – coach that is involved in special teams and every player that's ever been in special teams and every human that's ever known football says we hate this and you still put it in there everybody's fear is like well what else will they do there there still has to be some guardrails on like football is always going to be a potentially dangerous sport right or how do you kind of navigate those waters yeah, absolutely. Listen, football is a collision sport. It's not a contact sport. It's a collision sport. And that means there will be repeated high energy collisions among players. That's part of the essential nature of the game. And it always will be, period. And no one wants to change that. I think what you want to look at, though, is how can you take aspects of the game and improve the equipment, improve the training and improve the game itself based on what we're learning? Because we just know more. And look at automobiles, for example. You know, Think about your new baby, for example. It, it, when I grew up, I'm, I'll tell you, I was a kid in the 1960s. Whoa! Okay, so there, 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 there were no, uh, there were no car, there were no car safety seats, right? Nobody rode in a safety seat as a kid, right? I used to crawl around behind the back seat of our our family car while we're driving on the highway. I mean, today that seems absolutely crazy to us to think that we drive down the highway with a baby or a kid crawling around with the seats not restrained. So we, we got child safety seats and they got better and better. So it's just an illustration that as we learn more, as we understand more, we can make the game safer because we have more more knowledge to work with. And let's talk about the kickoff for a minute. You, you brought that up. Hell yeah. Um, you I, came loaded on this important. one. I, I, I assume you came ready for this one. I assume this was one. Listen, I'm happy to talk about it with you guys because it's an ongoing conversation. Here, here's what we're faced with. If you sit in my seat, who's you know, trying to, again, work on safety, reduce injury. The kickoff rate of injury has, has gone up substantially over the past couple of seasons, particularly concussions. So as you guys know, we made some changes back in 2018, 2019 with how the kickoff was set up, with the blocking rules and so forth. And it had a great effect. Concussions on kickoff went down substantially. They started going back up a little bit in 21, and last year they went up to the highest level we had seen in seven or eight years. They're back now as high as they were. Kickoffs are about 6% of all plays, but they're something like 15% of all concussions. And so it's very hard to just sit by and say, wow, that's, that's really unfortunate, but we're not going to do anything. You know, that spurs us to say, what can we do to make this a safer play? So if we're going to do that, we got to understand how are people getting hurt? Why are they getting hurt? Are there things about that we can change? Now, when you look at the fair catch rule, you know, where that came from was our competition committee and our ownership looking at colleges. Colleges made that fair catch rule a couple of seasons ago, and it had an immediate and dramatic effect at lowering their rates of concussion and all injury. And so I think our competition committee and our ownership, I think they looked at it and said, look, our numbers are going the wrong way. They're going way up. We got to do something while we figure this out and we need to figure it out. This seems like something we can do. I think it's a stopgap. I think it's an interim measure while hopefully we can figure out a better solution. And that is a really active process. When you talk about changing a rule, Pat, it's not just me writing an email and saying we're going to change a rule, right? We have a whole process. We have engineers that we engage. We have our health and safety experts. We have coaches. We have former players. Obviously, the competition committee has to recommend it, and then all the owners have to vote on it. So it's a really long process, but I think this year's – rule i look at it as a stop gap it's an interim step while we try to figure out something better for the long term but 
feels like we need to do something given how many injuries are happening on that particular play, way out of proportion to other plays in the game. And I can respect your chair and you having to think about that because that is actually your job. You know, like you were brought in because of the concussion situation. So, you know, the the big argument against that, I think, is the fact that special teams coaches said they watched back all of the kickoffs. And they weren't able to find all of the concussions that were allegedly being reported on kickoff plays. And then there was something said where somebody would say they had a concussion uh, days after, and then it would be said, oh, it happened on a kickoff. Like, I think there's a lot of mis potential communication or narrative building getting there. And I'm not in there to see the numbers, but we know in 2023, you can shape numbers however you want for any type of argument. You said 6% of the plays, 15% of the concussions, but there's a lot of people saying that they they have no idea where those concussions are coming from. Is that just a lie? They're just lying to, to fight against the rule that's happening? Or how's that? Because I, I, I think back, I watch a lot of football. I couldn't tell you the last time where I'm like, you know what, there seems to be on these kickoffs concussions happening. Is it like later yeah. diagnosed and you're not able to see on film or watching? Or are we just missing yeah. it completely? Well, I think I think there's several things there. First of all, I, I don't think anybody's lying. I think everybody wants the same outcome, which is a better, safer play. But but we look at only we look at the data, and so we have the video data and we have all the the concussion data, which comes out of the medical records. When were people examined and where were they diagnosed? So we absolutely are confident about how many concussions appear to be related to kickoff plays. Okay. But let's set that aside a minute for a minute. Even if we weren't talking about concussions. We can talk about all injuries and the fact of how the kickoff play has a higher rate of all injuries, not just concussion. And again, that makes sense. It's, it's a play with space and speed, right? You got guys running down the field at full speed who are incredible world-class athletes and, and you're having collisions there. And so there's got all the ingredients there to have injury. And, and the question again for us is why did that change? Like in 2018 and 2019, 2020, we saw those rates of injury go down now all of a sudden they're going back up. That That's something we have to look at and figure out, okay, are we executing a different play? Are there different players that are playing on the play? Are we officiating it differently? Something is changing and we're seeing that go the wrong way. And so that, that's what's motivating us to look at it. But we work with the special teams coaches and we work with everybody. And by the way, I think all um, all ideas are on the table. And I, and I mean this sincerely, Pat. I don't mean this in a, in a flippant way at all. If you guys had ideas, I mean, look, you're a former special teams player. We'd love people to submit their ideas about how right. to play, how to play the kickoff be made safer. Because we're just trying to get to a better solve, and and I think all ideas have to be on the table for that. Okay, so I'm um, sorry. Can you put me on the full screen? So what you're thinking will happen? This is from your office, right? This is your office. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is your office here in New York. I would come in, sit down right there. You'd be right there, and then I draw up the new kickoff up there. Is that how we see this working out? Hey, you know what? I would love to talk to you about it. We could spend some time together and I'd love to take your ideas and we'll take it and we'll take it to our engineers and let them analyze it and bring it on the table. Hey, I'll do my own stats and analytics too. I'll get my own. I'll get my own engineers in there because honestly, I mean, this is me patting myself on the back. I think like almost every kickoff stat, and I'm not saying I'm the best kickoff person of all time, but I think I have the record for damn near everything that you can do there. Onside kicks recovered, onside kicks recovered by yourself, touchback percentage, uh, field position, drive start average. Like right. I think in the kickoff play for me was a very important one. And for a yeah. lot of teams, it's a very important one. So I think everybody that like loves football sees those things going. So I'd love to be a person that is a part of like making the kickoff better. But I think it's going to be difficult because the way – a lot of people are talking about the numbers versus how you're talking about the numbers right now. Two very yeah. different trains of thought. I think we need to meet that first, get everybody on the same yeah. page, and then guess what? We're rowing the boat. Yeah. That's right. Now we're rowing the boat and we're making real progress, you know? And I think another thing that's important to say, Pat, let's get this out there. We want to keep the foot in the game, period. I mean, kickoffs and punts are an important part of football and should remain. And, and frankly, right now, with so many kickoffs being touchback, that's not a really exciting watching the ball be kicked through the back of the end zone. So so I, I, this isn't about getting rid of those plays, but again, it's how can you look at innovative and creative ways, just like we've always done in football. I mean, for the past 100 plus years, people have looked at plays and said, you know what, this play is too dangerous and, and we don't need that particular block. You know, we don't need that particular, you know, chop block to, to be able to execute a successful play. So I, I think that's the spirit you have to come at it with. 
A lot of people are excited about the XFL kickoff. Again, no, nobody's season. excited yeah. about that, Doc. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. Well, saying, we're, we're, we're looking at that and trying to talk to them and hear from their experience. So all I, did I was terrible. Don't do it. It's a practice drill. That is a practice drill. That is. That talking kid, to Dwayne? What's that? Dwayne, you're talking to Yeah. Now, if Dwayne talking Johnson says, let's do it. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's Dwayne, say no. It is the rock. But, like, could you imagine? Could you imagine walking into an NFL stadium? The NFL now we're talking. The NFL. We're talking about the greatest league on earth. You walk in there, and there's a kicker over here with a T, and there's a, like that. You know that can't. This can't happen, Doc. Okay, this this cannot. You know what I mean? This is training camp. This is practice. This isn't football. This is. But we will do something to save. Let's say, yeah, yeah, hey, let's yeah. keep. Let's do it. Let's do it. My milk. I appreciate you, Doc, coming in and answering those questions because for a long time it was like mixed messaging almost happening. By mixed messaging, it was every media person or insider person trying to take a shot at explaining something that they don't know. Not a lot of people know a lot about kickoffs, you know. So it's like uh, it's a very interesting and delicate subject. But the thing is, everybody's scared if you do that. What else will you do? You know, like what other rules are coming that get you away from football? Sounds like you're on the same page. Like it's always going to be a collision, high impact sport. How can we make it smarter? We just need to hear that, right? That's that's what we need to understand. That's exactly the message. They're going to be collisions. That's the exciting part of the game. And and how can you preserve all the things we love about the game, but take away some of the things that don't really add, but that just create risk? Because at the end of the day, go back to your point, Pat. When you buy a ticket and you show up to an NFL stadium, you want to see the very best players playing. Yeah. You know, you want to see the best guys on the field. If you see the Chiefs and the Bills play, you want to see Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen, right? That's who you want to see out there on the field. So how do we create the safest environment? There are always going to be some injuries in sports. We know that in every sport. But what can you do to make it the safest environment? That's that's just what should motivate all of us. Big conversation happening right now. Ty has a question for you. And we know you don't make this decision, but Ty has a question for you. Right, yeah, Doc, this might be more so a question for the owners than it is for you, but we've heard a lot about the difference between, you know, the grass fields and the turf fields and a lot of the players wanting all grass fields. Has there been any movement on that? I know we got the stats and they basically said, like, hey, we can't really differentiate that grass fields are, are much safer than turf fields. But then we hear the news that, you know, when the World Cup is coming to the United States in 2026, a lot of these yeah. NFL stadiums have already agreed because the soccer players have said, hey, we're not playing on turf. We're playing on grass. And they've kind of conceded and said, all right, sounds good. We'll have grass for the World Cup. But then you got a lot of their own players saying, well, that's kind of bullshit because we we want grass fields for ourselves. And they haven't really conceded on that point. Do you think we are anywhere close to to that being like a legitimate conversation where we might have all grass fields in every NFL stadium? Well, this is an incredibly active area of work, and and Pat, I hope I don't run you over on time. I'm gonna take a minute and work. Doc, this, you, Doc, yes, a lot here. Nothing but time, honestly. We okay, because right. this is information that I think the entire NFL world yeah. would love to hear. So please take your time. Sure. So this is something that we spend a lot of time thinking about and studying research. And I say we, the league and the Players Association together. I mean, we, we both have engineers and turf experts that work on this. And I'm just going to tell you the bottom line. The bottom line is it is way, way more complicated than it might seem on the surface. No pun intended. OK, um, the more I've learned about it, the more I realize how little I know about it, because what you come to realize is we don't just have two kinds of surfaces in the NFL, grass surface and artificial surface. We've got almost 30 different surfaces. And by that, I mean grass surfaces are very different from place to place. They're different in the height and the thickness and, the, and what's underneath them and the drainage. And then you've got variability even within the same season. You guys know this at Played. AJ, you know this. The grass in Green Bay in August is very different than the grass in Green Bay in January. It's totally different in terms of its properties. And then same thing with artificial. We don't just have one kind of artificial surface. There are a lot of different makes and models and how they're installed. So how do we try to start understanding that from an injury perspective? Well, what you have to really get to understand is what is it about each surface, whether it's grass or artificial? What is it that's contributing to injury and what is it that's protective? I mean, there may be some things that make it safer on certain surfaces for certain injuries that we don't even think about. Everybody thinks about ACL injuries, for example, but what about shoulder injuries or a concussion? You know, is a softer field better for some of those injuries? So when you start looking at what is, quote, the safest surface, you really have to take into account all the different injuries, but you also have to take into account how much variability there is in surfaces. Back to your question, how are we trying to get at that? There is a lot of movement there. This year, 
we've got a new um, little robot, literally is a small robot that drives around the playing surface and takes measurements on all different aspects of the playing surface. Because one of the other things we've learned, just to show you how much more complicated this is, the middle of the field is very different than the side, which is very different than the end zone. Even on the same field, you got a lot of variability. So this little robot drives all over, it takes measurements, and now we can really start to understand, okay, what is the field in Green Bay really like? What is the field in Tennessee really like? What is the field in Los Angeles really like? What are all these different properties? And now you can go back and match those properties against the injury. We've just never had that level of, of data or to be able to really, really match against injury and understand. And, and I think this is also important to say, if we went to our ownership tomorrow and said, hey, here's the safest field, we've proved beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is the safest field, I think they would all get behind that. I honestly oh. believe that. Okay, so we, we need just to, have not been, we need to we get just to that have point. not been able to get to the point of saying, hey, this is the safest surface. We just have not had the data to say that this surface is far better than others. Because what I can tell you guys is, for example, there are some artificial fields in the league that have a lower rate of lower extremity injury than grass fields. Okay, why is that? Again, that's what we got to understand is why is some artificial field actually playing safer than some grass fields? So it's a really important topic. It's an incredible amount of work that needs to go into it. We're trying to do the work, but we want to do it in a way that comes out to the right answer. And you mentioned about the World Cup. We're actually working with FIFA trying to understand what they're doing. They actually don't have a true grass surface. It's actually a hybrid surface. It's got grass and it will have some artificial fibers in it as well. So it's not just a pure grass surface. Super but one of the things you got to understand is that for soccer, their number one goal is the ball roll, how the ball rolls and how the ball bounces. That's what they're more concerned about than anything. And so we have to we have to make sure as we're looking at the field, our athletes are very different than soccer athletes. Right. If you look at an NFL player, they look very different yeah. than a soccer player. Hell yeah. And the demands on the service are very yeah. different also. Yeah, so I didn't – obviously, I didn't even think, like, Methy is deciding not to play because the pitch is crop in the ball – because you got to make contact, mm -hmm. right? So if that ball's bouncing and you flub one, it's like the – the house – how smooth the field is is a big deal in soccer. I always assumed it was strictly because of joints because they got to run seven, eight miles every single game. The added information there, you know, is good. Also, what you just said, that if you were to go to the owners and say, hey, this surface, our little, our little robot that took another human's job, I mean, yeah. it's, it's much smarter yeah, and able, I... it's able to do it. Yep. Humans aren't able to do it, okay? Right. Sod father put his hands down. Mm -hmm. He didn't know. But if that robot comes back and says, like, this grass is the best, you said that the owners would do it because a big narrative has been, like, these billionaires don't want to spend the money to change it. What it sounds like you're saying is, like, if we tell them all to change it, because it is pricey and we're wrong and it's not the right one, like all CMOs out of a job oh, yeah. and that's a bigger deal. And you just talked about like a turf field being it. Could you imagine with this whole like flip the turf, make it grass thing? You came out and said, our robot tells us that this fake turf is yeah. the safest. And then every owner puts that turf in. It would be a, Oof. it would be an absolute bomb PR catastrophe yeah. for you guys. That's an interesting, you're in a bad spot there. Hey, you're in an interesting spot. Doc. Well, we've got a lot, we've got a lot of work to do. Obviously, the players' input is very important in this, and the Players Association has been doing work. They've actually started last year surveying players after they play on different surfaces and getting their reaction and response. Because, again, remember, there's a couple aspects of surface. You want something that's safe, but it also needs to perform, right? Like you could make an incredibly safe surface, but guys couldn't perform on it because they wouldn't be able to get any traction to do what they need to do. So, so again, a lot more work to do here, but but I think my experience. How close? Quite How close? How close? How close you think till the robot? Sounds like a up? long. Sounds like a long way away. Yeah, and are you just? I hey, don't think. Doc, are you just bullshitting around? Uh -huh. You know, so that we don't. So that maybe we will just pass uh, and move on to another subject. You know, because Doc, that's what people are gonna say. Be honest. That's what people are gonna say, Doc. People will say what they say, Pat. I think you know me better than that. I've always been pretty straight and direct to you, and I'm just trying to give you some insight into why it's not as easy as it might seem. Um, I don't know how close we are, but what I know is this. We're putting all our, our efforts into it. We're putting tremendous research and, 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 and science behind it, and we're going to continue to share that. There are no secrets here. We'll share that information, obviously, with our players, obviously, with our owners and with everybody. But I just want to give you some insight as to how we're approaching the whole issue and Hell the yeah. fact that there's a lot that goes into this that's more than just – 
you know, one injury on one surface or the idea that it's grass versus artificial. It, unfortunately, it's just not that easy. Hey, Doc, listen, I think every time you've come on our show, mm -hmm. you have sat in the pocket, mm -hmm. you know, because we pepper. I mean, we do. We act as if you were the one. That is deciding every rule <laughs> yeah. change yeah. Mm -hmm. and everything that's happening in the world. I mean, heavy is the head. You're the first ever chief medical officer. So obviously that's kind of, but you've come back mm -hmm. on a very regular basis and been very open with us. But to your point, people are going to say what they're going to say. And I was just telling you, like, if it continues to take long, like in long and long while you're trying to figure it all out, the first reaction from people is like, ah, oh, they're just Passing the buck, yeah. pushing it just down. pushing it down the line. When it sounds like you're saying they're, hey, we're shoot trying to get all the fucking information because this is going to be a big, transformative yeah. decision whenever That's it comes. It. Hope you get it right, Doc. Good luck, Doc. Hope you get it right. Good luck out there. AJ has a question for you. Doc, what about the helmets? Are, are you guys looking at going to like making spe uh, position specific helmets? We're here. There's a quarterback helmet that has like a spare tire built into the back, so you don't hit your head on the back of the ground when you when you get tackled. Like, is that something you guys are, are moving forward with? Yeah, there are actually a couple that are out this year, AJ. So the quarterback one is one, and, and it's basically just got more padding inside, but in the back, because that's where you find that quarterbacks fall and, and hurt themselves, right? They're throwing the ball, they're getting rid of it, and they fall kind of unprotected and hit their head on the ground. So that one is already out, and there are several quarterbacks who've tried it already. Um, it actually is no larger and no heavier than the other helmets that, that people are wearing. Stop hating, AJ. Yeah. Yeah, he's hating on this. I'm not yeah, hating at all. I'm not hating Hater. at all. Okay. But the padding, the padding is just basically moved. You know, you're, you're, you're putting the padding. I mean, again, think about a car. You know, where do car crashes occur? They reinforce the car in certain places, and so that's what this is. The other one that's out is a is a, the trench, which is a, a lineman specific helmet, specifically offensive lineman. When you look at where most offensive linemen get blows, it's up on the front of the head, it's up on the frontal area. So the trench has got some reinforcement there. Um, we've also got some offensive linemen doing that. I, I think this is going to continue, and I think it's a great thing because again, look back to the car industry. Cars got safer and safer because we understood where crashes were occurring and how we could mitigate that. So. Down the road, I hope and I actually think in three to five years, you know, receivers will wear a certain helmet, DBs will wear one, you know, offensive, defensive linemen will have one, linebackers. It's just going to be a helmet that's adjusted to this particular risks. They may all look the same on the outside, but they'll be engineered differently and they'll have different padding, and that'll be a good thing. It'll make those players safer. Yeah, so the punters and kickers will be the only old school guys left on the field, AJ. Well, I said, I said football players, Pat. So. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! Step into my office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I'm just kidding you. Th thankfully, their rate of head contact's pretty low, so hopefully, uh, hopefully, we can we can uh, we can continue with that. Yeah, we're trying to make your life easier. I would like a kicker or a punter to go in there though, and just after every time he kicks, he runs full speed and dives his head yeah. full speed, and, <laughs> yeah. like, and now he gets into dogs. Yep. Now we got to study these fucking punters and kickers. <laughs> I need okay. a linebacker helmet. Now we got more stats coming out of one. I mean, that is. Uh, it's a, I think the position specific helmet mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yes. Like I think when it was brought up last year during the entire Tua conversation, I remember thinking to myself like how has that not already been thought of seemingly for the back of the head? But allegedly there's a new tr tone has a question for you, Doc. Yeah, Doctor, I do. Speaking of Tua and speaking of the specific helmet, um there's been a lot made that Tua did uh jiu-jitsu this offseason i'm not sure if he's a black belt or not yet but uh he did that to prevent concussions is there anything in your field any study going on right now that jiu-jitsu does in fact prevent concussions judo sorry judo martial arts yeah well i, I think there are a couple things people are looking at i mean specific obviously wouldn't want to comment on one individual but the idea is learning how to fall right how to protect yourself in a fall and and, and how to you know mitigate force into sensitive areas so i, I think a lot of people are interested in and are looking at that um, in parallel with that, a lot of people are looking at neck strength. You know, how does neck strength play a role in possibly mitigating or protecting you against concussion? And again, that's hard to study because it's hard to measure neck strength and then correlate it with um, weight of helmet and concussion. But people are doing that work. And so I think you'll see some data on that coming out in the next year or two. And hopefully we'll learn something. Again, um, I don't think preventing concussions is just going to be better helmets. It's certainly part of it. But we'd love to have other measures and other ways to train people to learn to fall or strengthen. And then at the same time, back to what we talked about at the top of the, the, the segment, and that is learning not to use your head. You know, how can you play the game without using your head as the first point of contact? I think that's 
that's going to be a very, very important conversation also. Will there come a time where you guys will have a robot at training camp or at OTAs where it'll be able to tell like the thickness of a skull or like the Ooh. strength of a neck? Like for instance, that guy from Centerville, Ohio on the, that's on the screen with us, like you just probably put your hands on it. It's like, all right, this guy's skull a lot thicker yeah. Yeah. Good dog. than other people. We could probably just put a baseball cap or one of the <laughs> yeah. leather helmets yep. on this guy versus somebody who might be more prone to a concussion. Is that information that is possible to get? Or I mean, I'm making a mockery out of how big and thick that guy's head is. Mm -hmm. It's a compliment. Bingo. Okay. He, he lost. Yeah. yeah. Say it again. <laughs> Say it again. But is that something that we're ever going to get to where we're maybe able to figure out beforehand who's maybe more prone for cause you, cause yeah. they can They can do that with hamstrings. They can do that with yeah. other muscles. Will they be able to do that with the brain? Ever feels like that might help some things too. Yeah, it's a. Oh no, that was the uh, one. Oh, they oh, cut no. him off. No. Jesus Christ, get him out of there! The yeah. league cut him off. Technical difficulty. Oh, uh, tell him to stop bringing up common sense. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. I don't know if that was us. He's man. very good, man. Honestly, I he is the guy man. for the yeah. job. He I'm is up. the guy for the job. Bro, I think we're one of the only shows he comes on to, so I'm very thankful for that. I don't know if he has kids that are fans of the show or whatever, or how we were became the ones to do this. I think he cares. I think yeah, he's passionate cool. about his job, honestly. He knows, like, hey, I can I can get my message out. We're trying. But also, for us, it's like, as I don't want to say as former players, because to his point, I didn't really deal with the medical stuff much, with, especially with well, well, knees. Yeah, How many knees. tackles? Yeah. You, don't you have, like, you have, like, 50 tackles, don't you? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's 50. No, 20-something. But still, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Bucker was up, and then he was yeah. down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot. But, I, like, I just think us experiencing a lot of stuff, you know, like, and seeing a lot of stuff, Ask different questions because, play, ladies and gentlemen, he did not get muted. Wow. Okay, okay. good, good, good. Okay, right. ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Allen Silver. Right. Doctor. Hey, I don't know what happens if it was us or you guys. You're the NFL. We are not. We'll assume it's on us, not on you. But I want to let you know why you were gone there in the abyss. We thought you were gone forever. We were singing your praises mm -hmm. about how good you are at this particular job. And then I also wanted to mention about how you come in here and we don't ask you, like, hey, the NFL – you know, started a thing where people are learning CPR now across the entire world right. because of something that happened in an NFL game. Congratulations. Like, yeah. it is never like that. And we want to let you know, we appreciate the hell out of you, but we are asking a lot of the questions that I think, like, the entire world would potentially want to know that's NFL fans. So we appreciate the way you handle this all. Now, back to the, are we going to be able to figure out if guys are prone for concussions more so than other yeah. people? Is that on the horizon or would that be impossible? Yeah, a lot of people are researching that, Pat, but we just got more to understand. And, well, that's a thing. And you guys know this who watch the game all the time. You see two players take the same exact hit. One guy gets concussed and one doesn't. Well, why is that? You know, it has to be something about intrinsic factors, whether it's skull thickness or neck strength, uh, you know, uh, one player, brain volume, spinal fluid volume. There are a whole lot of things that are people are researching. It's not easy to study that, but people are certainly looking at that and trying to figure out who might be more prone to concussion and, and maybe they need a different type of they need a different program. So a lot of work going on there. I'd love to see us get to that point. Certainly make my job a lot easier because, you know, I still take care of a lot of athletic teams. I still take care of a lot of patients with concussions, and I'd love to be able to have that information. But we're just – we're not there today. What if you became the guy? That's a concussion waiting. Yep, you can see it. <laughs> nope, he's good. Put him in whatever. You could freak some guys out pregame if you told them, hey, your spinal fluid is pretty low. You're probably getting knocked out today. Probably. <laughs> you know, do a little bit more of this. Be careful. Not so much Keep this. your head out of it, bud. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you for rejoining us. Let's talk about some of the great that is going on with the NFL and medicine and kind of making the world a better place. I just referenced in a joking way that CPR initiative that is kind of taking place because of what we all watched on Monday Night Football, but that's going to save lives. That at some point, that is going to save lives. The DeMar Hamlin you know, story is one that the entire world saw. What has the NFL done from that story to like change? Like, can't change the hit, right? That hit is a very standard hit it's just the reaction making sure everybody's able to do that if it it comes and what have you learned from it all yeah well i think i think it's a really really important opportunity path for the whole sports community to think about this whole idea of emergency preparedness how prepared are you for something to happen because mm -hmm. the story that night was was not just that we got 30 medical professionals there and they've got a plan and they've researched and they've trained I mean, yes, that was incredibly important. And in that moment, that saved that young man's life, which is an incredible story. But what I want people to think about is, how did, what if that happens in my league? What if that happens in my field? 
And that's something that's not just about football. It's not just about the NFL. It's about soccer. It's about lacrosse. It's about baseball. It's about youth. It's about high school. It's about college. And so this is a great opportunity for, for us to, to take that moment and say, you know, there was a great outcome that night because there were dedicated professionals who had a plan and who had trained and who had the right equipment. And that is something that can be um, uh, implemented at any level. I mean, we still hear horror stories every year, and these are tragic of a high school player in a sport. Maybe it's basketball, maybe it's volleyball, having a cardiac arrest, and the AED is locked up somewhere in the school and nobody can get to it because it's not during school hours. I mean, that just shouldn't happen, right? That just shouldn't happen. And so the message here, I think, is, first of all, people should get trained in CPR. I hope all you guys are trained, by the way. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but but you know I was what? at an airport. I was at an airport on the wall. There was a torso right there. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. And then I hit a button and, ah, 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 stay alive. They are, uh, 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 and I think you're supposed to keep going there. I don't know if you yeah, stopped, yeah. but they did certify me, I will say. so. But it's not just about being certified. It's about executing, too, right? That's a big deal. That's, right. That's a moment there, you know? Like, can you execute? And it's about being prepared, which is to say, hey, we've got this sports league. You know, we're a high school or we're a youth league. We're college. You know, what are we are we prepared to deal with common emergencies, you know, which are cardiac emergencies or a spine emergency or a heat emergency? That's another huge one right now in, wow. in the times that we're in. So. So, yes, the NFL um, has done a lot. You know, we did uh, make a, a coalition partnership, as you mentioned, with American Red Cross uh, and American Heart Association and others to to work on improving access to training for CPR and working with partnering with schools and other organizations. Um, obviously, our clubs, we've made an emphasis, you know, we've encouraged every one of our clubs to offer CPR training for all their staffs and all the players. I'll tell you another thing, Pat, this didn't make the media last year, but I'll share with you guys. We had a situation last year where one of our teams was traveling for an away game. The night before the game, um, a couple of members of the staff went out to dinner and, and an event, and one of the, the individuals had a cardiac arrest. And one of the other staff members had to do a defibrillation and perform CPR until the emergency personnel got there, saved that coach's life, got them um, to the hospital, and they got definitive care and they recovered. Nobody heard about that event, but that would not have happened and wouldn't have been a happy ending had they not been prepared and had they not been trained. And so. We just think this is something we need to keep talking about. And I, and I hope that, again, it's not just about the NFL or even about football, but really all levels of sport and, and this idea of just being prepared and thinking about it. I think people sometimes think, oh, you know, we're just at a youth level and this doesn't happen. But it does. There, there are youth all over the country um, who have unexpected cardiac events in a variety of sports. And, and it's about thinking about that and being prepared. Yeah, absolutely. Especially as of late, it feels like the heart is – a topic of conversation with younger and more fit people. I'm not diving in to what everybody will say, but I do appreciate the fact that we seem to be more heart health conscious. Now, granted, a lot of very terrible things had to happen in front of us all to put life into perspective, but it does feel as if we're a little bit more conscientious of it. I didn't know we had two NFL guys potentially die last year because of cardiac arrest. That is wild. I don't know how that doesn't get out in the world that we're in. Hey, God, is the person back coaching? The second person, yep, they are back. And then there was another situation a couple of weeks back. One of our clubs, uh, it was the Rams, I don't mind saying, they did CPR training for their staff, and so their coaches all got trained. A week later, one of their coaches was on vacation, not in L.A., in another situation, and there was a cardiac arrest of a, of a child in a swimming pool at the resort where he was. And this coach, who yeah. just got trained a week before, did CPR, participated in the resuscitation, and again, saved a child's Raheem. life. So. Yeah, this is real world stuff, and it, it wow. and it really matters. And it's it's as you said, Pat. It's it's important that we take the opportunity to to take all the bad stuff that happened and turn something good out of it. Yeah, saving lives. Actually, you should be incredibly proud. Mm-hmm. As should everybody at the NFL. And we hope it never ever happens again. But if it does, we got people ready all over the place Love it. to make sure we can all live longer and enjoy the hell out of our lives. Anything we should look out on the horizon, like Guardian Caps during games. Yeah, people have asked about that, Pat. We're obviously still trying to understand. I mean, first of all, when we implemented Guardian Caps in practice, we had a whole lot of data from colleges. You know, virtually every Power 5 school uses Guardian Caps in practice for football and had for a number of years. So we had a lot of data and a lot of experience to go on. We don't have any of that data in games. I mean, nobody's worn them in games. And so um, obviously we're trying to continue to learn about it. We're looking a lot this year in joint practices where they're used and trying to understand. But 
you know, I don't think the future of the game is, is about a guardian cap per se. I think what we can learn from that again is how can we design a better helmet? What are the materials that may make the helmet safer? And again, more importantly, how do we not use the head? How do we get the head out of blocking and tackling all the things that can be done without having to have head contact? So uh, more work to be done there. We're obviously looking a lot at the guardian cap this year and what the experience will be in, in training camp. And we'll share that, but um, but that's kind of where we're going on that. I just heard really good news there. AJ, did you just hear really good news there out of Doc's mouth I just in that answer? Yeah, he's he's smart. He knows the guardian caps are, are not going to be put in play for game day. Okay, but also have XFL do it. You know? Yeah, there you go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Your so, test hey, group. Pass them back. Test group. Hey, why don't you guys, you know, you guys did that little kickoff. Yeah. Okay, trash that. Mm -hmm. Let's not. <laughs> but maybe try this whole guardian cap thing. Last question for me because you did bring it up, but it's a real world problem seemingly everywhere. It is hot as hell. Like this Tampa Steelers game, yeah. yes. that's going to be 100 and what? Is there thoughts of like how, what are we, that's too hot, right, for football, isn't it? it are, isn't there like warning signs there? Probably shouldn't do strenuous physical activity <laughs> in this particular temperature. But there's no, really no answer because it seems like it's an unrelenting heat we have currently. How are you handling that and what is the thought behind it all? Yeah, well, again, there's a ton of preparation that goes into this path. So, again, every club has a, a, a an emergency action plan around heat illness, recognizing guys that are that are affected by heat, how we're going to treat them, and, and how we're going to prevent secondary complications from that. And it is something that everybody is really vigilant about. We've been in touch with all our clubs about it. Every club rehearses those scenarios every year, and it is just something that's on top of mind for all of us. It's something I think about every single day during the, these times of year. And so it, it starts with just that awareness. It starts with that preparation. It starts with thinking about all that we can do, you know, to mitigate the effects of heat. I will say that 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 this is primarily heat illness and, and heat emergencies. You see much more in practices and you see it obviously in this time of year. Um, it's not really been a game phenomenon. And, and when we've talked to experts about that, people that, you know, study this all the time, like the people at the Corey Stringer Institute, for example, that work with us, you know, the fact that football is a discontinuous sport is really helpful, right? You're not, you're not running constantly the way you are in soccer or in a marathon or something like that. You're each, each play is about five or six seconds and you got a break. And then obviously you've got the offense defense exchange. So, so you can't directly compare football to some of the other sports, which is reassuring, but by no means can we can we take a breather on that. We have to be extremely vigilant. Everybody has to have their highest level of alertness and awareness. We all have to look out for each other. And again, take a whole, all the measures we can to, to keep people cool. Because as you said, it's affecting places that never even affected before. And, it, and it's probably going to last longer than what we've traditionally seen. And those polar caps. I mean, keep an eye out. Look out. Yeah. Jeez, I, look I, out. I've heard about it. I don't know anything about it. But boy, I've heard. It's getting hot out there. Mm -hmm. It's only boiling more and more. Mm -hmm. Doc, you're the right guy for the job. We appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for coming on this show and allowing us just to pepper you with questions about every serious subject that you have to deal with throughout an entire season. You're the man for that, honestly. You need to know that. Hey, thanks so much. Always enjoy visiting with you guys, and I hope I'll see you down the road sometime soon. Do you? Do you enjoy it, though? Like, uh, honestly. <laughs> honestly. Like, we really oh, Absolutely. Okay. No, I do because you guys are passionate about the game and you ask good questions. And as you said, you ask the same questions that are on the minds of a lot of people. And I enjoy talking about this because I, I feel like we've got so much work going on. And when people really understand that work, they'll better understand some of the things that come out and, and hopefully we'll understand the, the philosophy that we're operating behind. So, yeah, talk to you guys anytime. I'm happy to happy to join you. OK, well, we absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you. Keep going. You're doing great work. Ladies and gentlemen, the first ever chief medical officer for the NFL, Dr. Alan Sills. Yeah. This is his actual office. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. He sent you that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty cool. It's for like the Play 60 when they, you know, show like the kids what they're doing. He's a wizard on this thing, bro. Oh, you should my see him. God. That's actually a part so of he... the the, the uh, interview. You know, they race these things. Yep. Mm -hmm. Can do a kid. <laughs> there was like six different doctors that were potentially up to be the chief medical officer. And it came down to the He's little fast. round CD yeah. race. Stool yeah. race. He fucking... His little feet, mm -hmm. he crushed it. So he, he probably has a practice and he has patients, regular patients and everything on top of his NFL. Team. Yeah, so I think like he is, um, he's been with the Grizzlies and the Predators, I think in Tennessee a couple Col of Colleges as well, Vanderbilt, Mississippi State. Yeah, so he says he, he's probably still the guy, teams, places, which is good for those teams. Obviously, they should maybe market that in a recruiting process. Like, hey, also, we got the NFL's biggest brain. Yeah. He is here. But that's not an easy gig, bro. Once he started no. breaking down the field stuff, 
He was There's like, no way it's ever happening. How with how much, like yeah, like you said, each turf field is different from the other turf field too. Like we know. There are cheap field turf fields that you've been on, and then there's ones that are really nice and, and a lot more expensive. And I think those cheap ones were the slick ones. Uh, they were like, yeah, yeah. hey, we don't have all the information on what's the best one, but we certainly know what the worst one is. Mm -hmm. This need, And I think that was like two years ago or last year. Yeah. They got like four of those out of the league. Yeah, like Detroit had it last year, and that's where Vaughn tore his ACL. Yeah, hey, but still, so they just but still it. though, places that have a legit closed dome that's not that they can't take the top off, they're going to always have turf, aren't they? Well, it, what if he says yeah. that – what if they come to the conclusion, them and the robot, that a turf field, a specific type of turf field, is the safest field? Yeah. yeah. Like, while he was saying that, I was thinking of them coming out with a press conference. Roger Goodell, we have listened to our players – and we are changing every stadium into this Z95 plus turf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then all the players immediately are going to go, grass! We're looking, we're, we're looking for grass. And then Dr. Allen Sills is going to have to step up and go, the reason why we are spending this $2 billion yeah. is because a robot told us and all of our studies told us, it's like, that's not, e not going to be an easy, you know what I mean? That's not going to be. No, what do you mean? No, no chance. If they say this one turf, then they're going to say, oh, it's conspiracy. This guy was lobbying. How much are they paying you, whoever owns oh, the, the good Oh, my God. Turf? He said oh. there's super grass, though. Correct. He said England has super grass. Green Bay. Green, Green Bay has super grass. Green Bay has super grass. Okay, what are, we, what are we talking about? Nah, we, don't, we don't know if that's the best yet. Yeah, they don't know if it's perfect yeah. because in Green Bay, it's shit's frozen still. Even though they got heaters underneath it, mm -hmm. whenever it gets frozen, then. And grow lights, too, all winter. And heated, though, then it's like a slush. Yeah, it becomes like worse. For some, mm -hmm. it's, uh, is there an answer? Yeah, no right answer. I've been told it's grass. It's not changing for a long time. Let's get some uh, Kentucky bluegrass out yeah, there. Yeah, maybe some Bermuda. Nah, Bermuda. Bermuda, the nice tight Bermuda down south. That's what we need. So I thought he was going to start breaking down to different forms of grass. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I can have a little bit of a conversation. It sounds like you can too. We only know we all know yep. a couple different mm -hmm. styles of grass there. I'll never forget the first time I played on a soccer tournament on Kentucky bluegrass. Because whenever he mentioned, like, soccer players wanting to pitch to be, we went to some tournament. I think it was in Virginia. I think it was in Virginia we showed up, and I looked at the field, and I was like, holy Sorry. shit, this is the nicest field I've ever. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have 15 goals a game in this thing. <laughs> and then you, like, it starts, like, getting tore up a little bit, and then you have people that just come in and fix it immediately. It's like there's some really high-maintenance grasses out there. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Like, you don't even think about the greenskeepers and everything that's going on. Like, at the Colts facility, old Troy is the head greens guy, you know? He's a legend, mm -hmm. but his job is like 19 hours a day during oh, yeah. the season, a lot. like turning that whole thing over. Mm -hmm. So I think Dr. Alan Sills says, said, before I recommend, you know, them hiring a greenskeeper for yep. 19 hours a day at every one of these stadiums and turning it over completely, which is mm -hmm. going to cost millions and millions of dollars for them. We would like to have the information, which one is the right one to go over, which is very reasonable. But I do appreciate the fact that we let him know reality. If you keep kicking the can down the road here, people are going to say you aren't looking yeah, up information. Right. They They're up. thinking you're bullshitting right now. And how about him going, I think you know me well enough. I don't bullshit him. Yeah. I had a good answer. Yeah. Hey, I like, I'm, not, I'm not the one saying it to you, but I'm just telling you this is fucking – Tell happen. the owners, though. Happen. He's probably thinking, hey, why don't you tell, you tell Mike Brown he's got to put grass in and he can't have back-to-back -back nights of Taylor Swift because it'll tear up his grass. Yeah. You tell him that. Mm. That's a whole nother – Ball yeah, game. Yeah. Man. Haven't even. Out. Can't stop T-shirts. Yeah. yeah. You can have, you can host high school turf. You can have everything when you have turf. They do it all. I'm sure Indy hosts everything, probably. Yeah. The I would city, imagine the Lucas city. Oil. Yep. Yeah. The yeah. city does. Colts. Right. City That's does. a very city. good point. Yeah. But That's what I'm saying. Heinz Field. That's why they have it. All these high schools have field turf because they can host a billion things and not have to worry about it. Well, the reason why Heinz Field there would really get a depiction of being a crop field is because, like, the game that would come after the high school state championships that were happening there on Friday, which is, what, five of them. Oh, yeah. Now it is. Now man. it's five of those games are happening. Then Pitt would have a game yeah. on, on Saturday, Saturday. Or Thursday. Even. And then Steelers play on Sunday, Sunday somehow, like, prime time, and everybody is all over the place. And they're like, look at this shit field. Mm -hmm. And then they, the Steelers started, like, spray painting it, the dirt green, too, which did not help because then players come out and, like, they're painting the dirt. Oh, yeah. They're, painting, TV. they're lying to people. This field is worse than ever. They had to get it better. But that is something that is, like, 
a thought whenever it comes to the business of transforming. They switched to the uh, old Kentucky Blue, I believe, in 2009, 10, around there. It's been it's been immaculate ever since. It's a beautiful field. Wow. Beautiful. Wind field. is still a pain in the ass. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hey, that Jumbotron up there looks sweet. Yeah, no joke. It, it looked awesome. And that, that was the... Uh, Thing that caused a lot of kickers' problems, right? And punters because there's that wind tunnel or something. Yeah, so it would come in through that one way and then go out that other yeah. way. Yeah, it's kind of gone. And then they raised the lighthouse a little bit. It's still mm -hmm. going to suck. There's a lighthouse? Yeah. I mean, yeah. oh, yeah. Foxborough weather is going to suck. No matter what. Punting and kicking there is going to suck. That's mm -hmm. why Nick Folk will have that job forever if he wants Yeah, because he's so good at kicking outdoors. Bingo, yeah. Like, that's he'll figure that out. Yeah, he Belichick said he's taught him stuff about, like, kicking in – different climates yeah i don't know if it's just like you naturally have it or if it's like a mental toughness or if he's just bullshit yeah and he's just getting lucky and he's just good yeah, yeah. and he's, he's just really been good. bullshitting for like 10 years but yeah. he is very very good in there where'd he grow up where'd he come from like did he grow up kicking in, in that kind of condition i don't know yeah i mean he was he, he had a stint with the jets so i know he it's not easy to chicago's got to be the toughest right pat with that weather and the, the grass that's nine inches long so you know, I don't. The grass certainly. It's a known sucks. thing. The grass is grass certainly ridiculous. Sucks. The wind certainly sucks. But I think like everybody thinks Chicago, windy city, because that's like the nickname. Cleveland yeah. is. Oh yeah, yeah. I could, Cleveland yeah. is by far the worst. They they have. It's on the lake. Yeah, I mean, it's on the lake, right city. there. Yeah. It's, and when it gets cold too, man, like the lake effects, everything that happens there is crazy. That's why, like Phil Dawson, what Phil Dawson was able to do there for how long he did it, like he's another one of those guys, like Folk, where it's like. That guy, I don't know what he was doing and how smart he was. He's certainly more mentally tough than I would be because you'd be looking at a kick and it's like, well, where the fuck am I putting this? Yeah. You know, and where am I even starting it? Some guys are able to do it. That's why this Cade York kid who got drafted by the Browns at LSU, it's like I do not envy his position at all. Good luck. Good luck up there. That whole AFC Is North. Mason on a team yet? Is Mason Crosby on a team yet? He's, He's just not. kicked a ball on a boat at a – Oh, that. Perfect. On the lake or whatever, right to somebody's chest. Mm -hmm. He's not on. Who's your guy's? And name? Robbie is Robbie out too? Robbie's still a free agent. Gold. We saw him out of Tahoe, right? He said he is a free agent right now. Yes, we got. There's multiple like vet kickers out there just waiting for for a gig to open. They'll get a job. You know what they're waiting. For. Yeah, they will. Yeah. Well, get that's what, don't the, the Cowboys need a kicker. Uh, yeah. They they just uh released like Tristan Viscaino. He was in uh, a a battle with someone else. You see, that, who got a workout. Who? For the Commanders or Panthers? I forget. Commanders or Panthers? Taylor Russellino. Really? Nice. Oh, good. Come on, buddy. Good for him. Come on, buddy. Well, that's what like, the Packers drafted a guy, uh, Anders Carlson, I think, from mm -hmm. Auburn, and they said he's been just, like, so inconsistent. Like, he's got a massive leg, but he's missing a lot of kicks, so we'll see. Like, I would imagine since I think they drafted him in, like, the fourth or the fifth round, so, like... He'll probably make the team, but I don't know. Like, no, no, definitely make. Well, that, that's what I mean. But yeah, that, drafted but, in the fourth round. But if yeah. you got fucking Robbie Gold out there available, and, and fourth round pick, bub, he's gonna at least they're gonna give him the opportunity to miss at least yeah. eight eight games Try. worth of kicks for sure. But also yeah, like, but, but Rogers isn't the quarterback anymore. Like you know, like you could like they could they could go through points where like Mason was in a little bit of a slump because it's like all right, well we're still gonna score touchdowns like. I don't know. Like, they're going to need every point they can get. I mean, you're absolutely right, but I hope it's not, you know, we're five games into the season and he's missed six field goals, and, and that's why they've lost four games. Yeah, and they're going to say, well, he's better turn it around. We did spend a fourth rounder on him. That happened with a guy uh, out yeah. of uh, uh, Florida, Florida State, State in State, Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. For whatever reason, he just couldn't hit an NFL ball for whatever reason it was, and they he just kept getting opportunities, opportunities after opportunity. It's like if you get drafted, they're going, they're going to give you every yeah. chance that you can possibly get. He was early. The Cowboys' so. current kicker, yeah, third rounder. He was a second rounder. Second rounder. Yeah. Yeah. Cowboys' yeah. current kicker played for Toronto FC of the MLS for a couple years, and then was in the USFL last year. What's his name? Oh. Uh, his name is Brandon Aubrey. Hey, good luck. Go get him. Do we know how he's doing? Is he making kicks? I do know. Well, none of this matters. I just, I, I know that I, I saw <laughs> Training camp doesn't matter. Like, honestly. No. Training camp doesn't matter. Can you, no. if Can you make it in the game? Bingo. Guy makes 27 straight in training camp. Everybody loves him in the dorm and in locker room and everywhere. Like, we got a guy. And then in the first preseason game, he goes one of three. They're like, all right, he'll get it back. He'll get it back. And then he does, like, none of that matters. Nope. Nothing matters at all until just Sunday. You know, there's guys, there's stories I've heard where a guy has missed every single kick in practice. Two periods, one on Wednesday, one on Friday, every single kick in the team period drill. Then gets a Sunday, 
goes three of four. They win the game. Guy gets offered a contract. Keep the job. See, like, how you doing? It's awesome. Like, all that matters is can you put the ball through the fucking uprights whenever the game is there? And if you can't, you'll be gone. And if you can't, you'll be kept around. But if you're a fourth rounder, they're going to let you miss those things for a while. Yeah, be kept you know, around. Because of how smart they are for drafting you yeah. in the fourth round. I was drafted in the seventh round. That's why I was kept over Tim Mass Day. Tim Massey was definitely better than me at training. <laughs> He's a good player. Tim Massey was definitely better than me at training. He knew what he was doing. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. And they just cut him. They're like, well, we didn't fucking draft him. So. Mm -hmm. See you later. See ya. And I was seven. I was picked 222. Couldn't even imagine a fourth rounder. He'll be yeah. able to He might have been a fifth rounder. I don't know if he was a fourth. But still, they they definitely, yeah, I mean. Went and got him. The, the they're going to need him. Not they're going to need matters. him. Green Bay. He'll make him in the game. Yeah. He's fucking yeah. better. I'll tell you that much. We'll know. What's your problem? We'll know soon enough. What's your problem? We get rid of Mason. Just fucking run it back. I mean, run it back, you know, I mean. It's good to have a kicker. It is good to have a kicker, especially when you lose, you know, a four-time MVP. Quarterback. Take them for granted. You take yeah, those guys for granted. Well, fans have no idea until they're just upset four straight weeks. What happened? Well, you missed, kicker missed. seven kicks. Kicker yeah. and punter, absolutely. Yes. You all of a sudden, oh, yeah. you, oh, yeah. you get a new punter comes in, the dude, you know, hits 19-yard punts out of bounds. Like, I'm happy if I'm playing wing, kind of, but. But you can't do that too many times to get away with it. Yeah, that's a defender. That's a guy mm -hmm. who's on a defense. So, yeah, hey, we need this fifth. Because hey. we'll make the stop. Because we'll make the stop. Just get out of bounds, and then we'll defense will make the stop. Yeah, put the fire out. You know, any time I've hit, I think I hit two punts under the Chuck Pagano era regime where there was Shanks or whatever. And Chuck saying to the defense, put the fire out, put the fire out, like it was a turnover. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, yep. fuck you, Chuck. God damn it. <laughs> like, I'm hearing, like, ah, oh, that is tough. I literally just put the defense in a terrible position. But you want to talk about a position getting devalued, pal. Look at the punter deals. Punter deals are getting real small. Those are getting real. Are oh. Yeah, young guys. Like, Thomas Morstead's in, like, his 15th year. I don't know how often that's going to happen. Because in punting, you got to be very explosive. So a lot of these young guys can be very explosive. And are you going to spend any money, really, on the punting position when you're literally trying to cut back on every other position? It's an inter I'll be excited to see what these contracts for punters look like in about three, four years. Yeah, is Morstead the uh, oldest? Yeah. yeah, is he the oldest left? Yeah, and then Hecker down in Carolina. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. he had. I mean, he, he's one that got paid and then... To your point about having to cut back, they had to cut him, right? Because, yeah, now he's yeah. with the Panthers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he's doing well down there. I think he had a – I think he was second in the NFL in net last year. Nobody talked about him because he's in Carolina. Carolina. Because he, did Huber just retire? Yeah. Yeah. Huber called yeah. it. Hey, what a run. Huh? He's like the king of Cincinnati. High school, college, NFL, all right there. Yeah, that's electric. And remained a Cincinnatian through the whole time. Yeah. Like – you know, he never Ohio guy. He is, he is awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Huber is one of the guys. He is, he is part of the team. Yeah, I love Kevin Huber. Lucky that I went to college in the same era he did and played in the NFL. He obviously played much longer. The game is going to miss him, especially with that silky whoop behind oh, his yeah. back run. Uh -huh. Then he gets demolished. Yeah. Killed. Yeah. Killed. So cool. But it is cool. All right, let's get to a break. On the other side, we'll do some phone calls, and we'll go into the weekend in a beautiful fashion. We'll have uh, Tone Diggs. Predict some games mm -hmm. okay. for us to gamble on we go. for these preseason weekend we're about to experience. And then, you know, we go have the greatest weekend of all time. Absolutely. Yeah. And the only reason why we're doing that is because it's the next weekend. Mm -hmm. That's right. And guess what's happening next weekend? Greatest weekend of all time. Boom. It's only getting better. Boom. Mm -hmm. Every day is getting better. Boom. Getting better by the day. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh wee. You're right. Clayton Anderson new song. Hell yeah. Absolutely. He lets it rip. That was on my feed this morning as I opened my phone somehow. Mm -hmm. I was like, hell yeah. What better way to start a Friday? Fucking hell yeah, I said. Listen to it right now. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Take, oh, phone calls. 1-833-432-3663. 1-833-432-3663. Or 1-833-4-DA-DOME. All right, be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Oh, thanks. Oh, wow. Take. Take. Five. 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 Well, nonetheless, as of February 1st, uh, Pat McAfee is officially a contributor with WWE. Hey! I've been preparing for this my entire life. McAfee wins! McAfee wins! Pat McAfee has done it again! 
It's time to toast the boys and toast the brand. McAfee's wanted to drink beer with Stone Cold forever. Stunner! Stunner! There's a point in my life, all I could think about doing was professional wrestling. McAfee closing in on another WrestleMania victory. First, we're gonna have to get the okays, obviously. And we did from people high up. They were the only people that knew for a while. There was like three people that knew in the whole world that that was gonna potentially be a situation for a little bit. The city of stars, lost the Connors here. We will be there tonight. Nobody's supposed to know we're here. It's gonna be tough. And if you're a man that's only known for wearing tank tops, you kinda gotta cover it up. There's some bunk beds there, you know, there's a shit on a shower here in the back. He sat in that bus six, seven, eight hours, that nine, ten up. hours. I'm turning down that thing. Holy fuck, what a view that's gonna be. Hell yeah. Look at all those fucking people are gonna be there. Just waiting, you know, for an opportunity to potentially have a WrestleMania moment. It's ridiculous. This is awesome. WWE is just like the best at operating. They take care of the non-obvious. So we're very thankful to be here. And tonight should be walking. Hell yeah. I think there's like three people I know here. Are we not supposed to come in here? No. Yeah. Alright. Four now. Four Look now. at you. Yeah. Say a word. I'll see you at uh, SoFi. You gonna be in LA? I don't know. George is a, you know. It's maybe, a loaded question. George, we don't know. George, you don't know. Maybe. What's up, Stan? Oh, nice. <laughs> As soon as I saw George showcase that yeah. tight end university tank top, I knew there was a chance old George about to do something special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me, Welcome to WrestleMania! You know, the night was getting late. We're sure. Yeah. We, we didn't know if a moment was going to pop up where maybe my services could be utilized. I haven't been in a ring since SummerSlam. Okay, like not even in one. All I wanted was the Miz to have an opportunity to have a match. Just a WrestleMania match. match. Yeah, yeah, good guy. Stand there. And then the Miz mentions, I sent out an open challenge, and we go, Oh my God. There it is. And I put out an open challenge, and no one responded. Why? Because I'm the Miz, and I'm awesome! Hey. Let's. I have walked out into a stadium as a WWE superstar probably a million times in my head. WrestleMania was missing Pat McAfee in the Pat McAfee show. And I'm thankful to the WWE Universe that said hello whenever I came out on that massive fucking stage. By the way, there's only two announcers undefeated in WrestleMania history, me and Pat. I can't believe McAfee's here. You're a legend, dog. You're the oh, best, man. dog. Hello, miss. None of us saw this alleged open challenge that you said. But good news. This is my WrestleMania tank top. If you still would like a match, why don't you let me beat your ass right here, right now? You all want to see the Miz versus Pat McAfee right here, right now! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! I'm the host of WrestleMania, and I cannot make matches official. Miz, I do believe your tiny balls are showing. Tiny balls. Tiny balls. Baby meat as well. There's 80,497 people here. Somebody has to be able to make a match official somewhere. I am the dog father and the host of WrestleMania, so 
I feel like I can make that match happen. Right now, we got a ref. We got you. We got you. Let's get cranking. I'm out. I'm so thankful to the people at the WWE. It was a super cool night, oh. super cool moment, and I'm very thankful for it all. 5.30 a.m. Sunday. This day started 6.30 a.m. Saturday. So much cool shit happened in between now and then. Joke of an existence. I'm very thankful for everything. Let's go take a nap. What? Hey! Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, and cut. Shut the fuck up! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Feel Good Friday, August 11th, 2023, hour three of the program starts now. Football is happening. There's a lot of games this weekend. Oh, yeah. Preseason football is heating up. That's AJ Hawk. The talks the table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Done. Done. Cowboys turn. Diggs is here, who was hand signaling me something before we went live. Before the break, you said I'll give some plays out uh, for the priest. I said I got four of them. Okay, four plays Ooh, coming soon. Joining us right now, though, is uh, the insider of the future. Amen. A man who is on top of every single storyline happening all around the sports world. That's right. Times. His dad is formerly the founder of, well, I guess still the founder, but formerly runs Starbucks. Sure. He could have chosen a life of just kicking his feet up on a yacht mm -hmm. with a suit. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead, he decides to kick his feet up with a suit. On Fox Sports 1, like the last three days. So Hell yeah. This guy's becoming a TV personality right in front of our eyes. Insider of the future, a man that Connor said looked like Clay As on TV. As a Ladies and gentlemen, Schultz. Hey, Schultz. Hey, Schultz. What the hell is Connor talking about? Whoa. I look clean. I look dapper. 
This man called me an animated wrestling character. No. It's Connor, you're killing me. Yeah, I did you not. did look dapper. You did look yeah. clean. I think what Connor was saying is there was a couple angles there where you were turning to your side. Yep, it was lighting. Like, that, look, that guy looks so good, that can't be real. Yes. That's, that's like a statue. Thank you. Yes. I'm oh. A, yeah. Okay. You know what like I mean? Like a sculpture. I got to tell you, a couple of folks said it to me, and they said, you got to get yourself on McAfee to defend your suit game. And I said, what do you mean? Well, it wasn't And then I suit pulled up the tape, and the yeah, tape screenshot. don't lie. So he had a, you had a little maitre d' look going on. Yep. Right? Sick. Yeah. Hey, you, have you been doing this before, or are we just realizing this now? You're on TV a lot this week, right? Not normal. This is new. Are you working for Fox Sports now? What's going on? So I flew to LA. I was I did last Friday, and Friday went well. Then they said, "Can you do Monday?" Right. And then Monday went okay. okay. Can you do Tuesday? Oh wait, can you stay for the whole week? And actually, I right. was going to stay another week, but at some point, Schultz's got to get back to the family. Yeah, of course. <laughs> hey, I would love to get back to it, uh, but Schultz, you got to do what Schultz, you got to do. You know, right. you no, guys, it went. You guys need Schultz more than Schultz needs you. But mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. You guys like me. I like you. Maybe we can do business. Is there something potentially popping off here? I would hope so. I would hope so. And uh, we're having those discussions. I also did Bleacher Report Insider Stream oh. on their app. Going to continue doing that, I think, throughout the season. So hopefully hopefully you'll be seeing more of me, Patrick. You know, listen, I, when I wear a suit, I think to myself, would Pat and AJ approve this suit? Mm -hmm. Don't think and when I got on that set, I thought to myself, Boston Connor would too. Well, and then I felt the tape. you mm. thought of that? You honestly thought Don't of us when you were on there? Because that was a big moment. The fact that you were thinking about us, we really appreciate. Now, I miss you guys. I got to say, I miss you guys. I don't think it was the suit, though. Like, I think we we're, I think your friends were misjudging what happened here. It awesome. was not, it was not the suit. He no, was not, it was great. I don't even think we talked. Oh, about I it. had so much makeup on. I was so caked up that I looked fake. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah, that is sculpture. what, yeah, yeah, that is what Connor was referring to. Not, suit looked good. We love seeing you on TV. We're happy for you. But Connor would like to clarify some things, I do believe. Yeah, look, Schultz, I don't know why uh, the clay was supposed to be an insult. I, <laughs> I, I came from the kindness of my heart. I was being completely genuine. You looked like a sculpture up there. I did enjoy the suit, and that wasn't a mean thing. Now, Mitt McMahon might have said something disrespectful, but again, that was not my sentiment whatsoever. What was it? Connor's lying right now. Well, <laughs> yeah, that is what Connor. No, did. Ty was there for it too. Yeah, Mitt did say uh, that Schultze, the only thing that you, you were missing. Uh, were the two bolts in your neck because you kind of look like Fra <laughs> Frankenstein's monster. From That's the what he, I didn't hear that. Yeah, Can we yeah. pull up a screen yesterday. grab? Schultz, what's that all about? Why are people saying that? Do you think maybe, do you think maybe because all the makeup was on, you weren't able to be yourself? Maybe you just, you, you, No, it was great. I thought you looked good too. I, I don't know so what these I. guys are talking yeah. about. What do you mean these guys? This is you. I Clay, it. It, it's a compliment. I, I wish I looked like Clay. I don't. Do you? Yeah, you all know what? the time. I'm, oh. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to come in. I'm going to say, you know what, Connor? You're a real clay-looking motherfucker. Mm -hmm. I, I will have a pep in my step then. I, like I, I have. Schultze, Schultze says to Connor, you know what, in the third person, I really appreciate yeah. that you it, that it came from a good place. I have extremely thick skin. I did not take it personally. And uh, if good. anything, I thought it was pretty funny. But it is good to get the bottom of it and understand the impetus of what you were actually saying. So it was a good thing. Yeah, that's good. We got okay. we had a little misunderstanding. Okay. <laughs> what, what? What's that? What we, had a, we had a little misunderstanding. And now we're all I think back. Foxy was laughing, though. No. Oh, Foxy no. was definitely oh, Foxy. Foxy. No, I wasn't. Foxy was was bad. Bad. I love Foxy you, Schultz. No. Foxy's he a was, pig. Foxy's, Foxy's a bad guy. I was True. muted right. back here. Uh, AJ, do you have any questions for Schultz, pal? I'm not sure if I do or not, Schultz. So let me tell you something. What's I that? Was not able to What's that? Oh, oh, Schultz, I'm going to tell you how something on. goes on this show. What the on hell? this show, when on. I ask AJ if he wants to have a question <laughs> and he goes, no, that means he's done with this human on our show. Jesus. So I just said, AJ, do you have a question? I didn't Schultz? say no. I didn't say no. I, there's a lot going on. I got to hone in exactly what I want to ask <laughs> because there's so much going on right now. But, Schultz, I was unable to see this. Uh, this segment of your whole time on this show. How do you think it went other than your looks? You, I know I heard you killed it, though. He like, looked what, good. He yeah. and he he it's not other than that. that. I need to see a screen grab because I missed it. I'm sorry. I will go back and look after the show. It is screen grab. Up, but how did it go? Are you, is that something you want to do every day? Yeah, Z. Yeah, I, I'm I'm all in, bro. You know you know that. I, I want this. You talked earlier, Patrick, about, you know, 
sitting on the yacht and sitting in the suit and having your everything pampered and silver spoon. And I'm fully aware of that. Like, I don't want to, I'm not going to hide from the fact that I was born on home plate. You know, we talk about being born on first base. I went around the whole <laughs> base path. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I had well, the entire, um, I, I had everything at my disposal. I don't want to say that that wasn't the case, but with that in mind, it would be an absolute shame for me not to take full advantage of my situation, which was being well-educated, having opportunities to travel and having culture. And like, I, oh, yeah. to me, and I, I, I experience guilt with this all the time. This is not something that I've, you know, fully, um, figured out. It's just the bottom line is I, I experience guilt with it. So with that in mind, I want to maximize everything. I really want to make my parents proud and I want to be on TV every day talking football and, as you said, being the next generation NFL insider. Hell yeah. Hey, good for you, Schultz. Yeah. You, Schultz. That's a real self-aware thing to do. Yeah. You know, because that's not normal. Normally, people in your position will be like, did you see all the work I fucking did being born to this successful family? Mm -hmm. You know, they have that kind of mindset. So you not having that, we think is beautiful. And that's why we think you're only going to grow and grow yeah. and get bigger and bigger. Spotlight growing, screen growing, everything growing. And we appreciate the hell out of you, Schultz. What do you got on tap this weekend, pal? Just with the fam, you know, very low key. And um, it's interesting. When I flew back, I took the red eye last night. And my wife said, you enjoy this shit, don't you? There we go. I said, what do you, said, what do you mean? She said, you like the grind of Hell yeah. being in the studio all week, Hell yeah. coming up with topics, chopping Hell it up with the other talent, chopping. breaking stories, and then coming back on the red eye and getting, you know, diving for, full head first, you know, in, into the family, into the kids. And I said, I do. I do. Because that's how it was taught to me with my dad. That's how I saw, it. you know, what the experience I had was was very much so like my dad's going to grind, my mom's going to grind, and they're going to do it for us, right? And so I had to reset my expectation of, okay, to your point, like I don't necessarily have to do it. And maybe it is selfish because it's not something that like I need to do to provide for my family. Nah. But I want so badly, Pat and AJ and all the McAfee fellas, Boys. I want to Thank be you. the next guy. Eagles. Like you had Ian on, you've had Adam on. I want to be in that category, right? And so the only way to get there is to follow the path that that's been set for me, which is what my parents did. And so my wife was saying, like, you know, most people would probably be like, oh, I'm so tired. Like, and I, I felt refreshed. I felt yeah. energized. You know? yes. and, and that's because I, I love it so much. So I guess that's the best way to put it. Not obstacles, opportunities, mm -hmm. right. you know, and I appreciate the fact that you're willing to put into work when you could be just an incredibly lazy, entitled person. So we appreciate that. Yeah. With that being said, Connor was not complimenting you that's whenever he lying. said Clay. I know, I, I know he was. And, I I mean, was. and that's why this all happened. But we will continue to watch you evolve yes. and mold yourself oh, yeah. just like you were, Clay, into the version of yourself that will make you feel the most fulfillment in this one opportunity that you have at life. It's not your fault that your dad was incredibly successful, but it is your fault if you take it for granted. You have not done that. We appreciate you. Have an incredible weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Can I say one more thing? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about, can we shout out the GOAT, R and Rock? Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you, Jordan. Love Love you, fam. Yeah. What's up the door? Yeah. We all love Ari. Hell yeah. Shout out the goat. Ari Miroff is that dude. Yeah. Last we... personified. No cap. We agree. We agree. Ari's litty. Come on, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ari's, yeah. Ari's litty. For hey, real, for real. We appreciate you, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Schultz. What's happening? Hey. Hey. What is happening? Hey. All right. Let's get to the phones. Mm hmm. You know, it's I like that last angle. The last angle was really good. I could really see you. Every time. I forget <laughs> about it. Every time until it shows up. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, Zeke, this, Zeke the... makes me tiny, too. Yeah, that was a good play. That awesome. was a good play. We we had, um, you know, an opportunity to laugh with Schultz. Yeah. Yeah. We had fun with Schultz. But he, I, love pre Schultz. I appreciate him saying I was born on home plate, not even yeah. third base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You right. Because a lot of people, that's Very the saying. Part. It's like, this guy was born on third base and but thought he hit a triple, is what people why say. Why do you feel guilty, though? Tell him to stop feeling guilty about it, that your dad is successful. 
I think he feels guilty because he seemingly Do does have a conscience. Yeah, it's not his fault. Yeah. That is, he's, no. he's, he's, he's not seemingly just ruining a lot of other people's lives because he has an innate power because his dad was somebody who was smart. Like, I think that is where nepotism has really been something that people hate. It's like somebody gets put in position of power over a lot of people who have a lot more ability and talent strictly because of the, the womb that they came out of. Sure. And it's like those should be the people that feel guilt. Mm -hmm. And they don't. You know what I mean? Yep. Exactly. The people that, just like anything else, just like, I'd say, the Rookie Symposium, the people that need to hear it, it's not registering in their brain. They're not listening. Well, shout out to Schultz, man. Out there grinding. Yeah, he, yeah. That's the worst job in sports media, too, he's choosing to do. Mm -hmm. So, sure. good for him. Let's and it's the hardest to get, get your foot in, to get their foot in the door and to try to, See, to get now, some traction, too. With that being said, his dad is, helps him with that, right? Yeah. I, mean, I guess you got to make the effort to go reach out to every, yeah, you just got to develop relationships. Yeah, but he loves the grind. And his wife says, you really love... You love this shit. How about him saying, I was in the studio thinking of ideas, chopping up with the boys. The other town. You had a job. Got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got it. Cool. cool. You know, and dive right back into the family. Like, yeah, you're a human. We get it. Mm -hmm. You were just talking about this a couple seconds yep. ago. Love it. Mm -hmm. What a different world that bro grew, oh, yeah. grew up in. <laughs> oh, my God. Grew up in, yeah. I live on this lake now, and I'm watching these kids with these fucking jet skis all summer. Bingo. And I'm like, these kids lived a complete, are living a much Boy. different life than the life that I live. I don't even know how these humans, like, how is that human able to relate to anybody? I don't know. It takes a real special mm -hmm. person, I think, especially at that younger age. I couldn't even imagine Schultz in high school. Oh. He's, he's so showing up in a Benzo, probably. Oh, yeah. He looks so cool. <laughs> probably mm -hmm. sweatsuits galore. Yep. yep. Basketball with him at all times. Handsome. Yeah. Starting point guard. I don't know why, why you keep looking at me suit? like that. I said it as a compliment. Just didn't feel that way. Now, that's my truth, and if you guys react to it how you I, react to so, it, I can't control that. Your was it makeup? What's that? Was it a lot of makeup or what? Was, was he wearing a lot of makeup? That's not his fault. It's not his fault. Believe me, I've been... Uh... I've had a makeup artist dump something on my face, and it's, like, very obvious that you oh. just, like... Mm -hmm. you. No, mm -hmm. AJ's thinking about uh, Schrager last year at the Combine. No, I think he was thinking of somebody dumping on the face. Yeah, oh. he does. He's a fucking pig. We're, even though we're talking about makeup right now. Jesus he loves Christ. that. He I've loves had that. Some I'm talking about makeup. I'm talking no, you're talking about John McAfee underneath the hammock. You spill a bunch of frothy makeup on your face yeah, or what? Yeah, yeah exactly. Frothy. Exactly. Okay. That's your, what's your problem? We're trying to like. What's your problem? What's your problem? Right. We're trying to sympathize <laughs> with this guy who's trying to sympathize with humans who grew up as a bazillionaire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he got put in a spot there. It's not his fault. Like, I wasn't a makeup expert. And then somebody puts makeup on me who's allegedly an expert. And then all of a sudden I go on TV and then I see a still shot. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. That human made me look much, much worse than I actually look. What the hell? And I already look bad. That's not your job. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah. that, that's not what I signed up We're for. We're going to do that every day now, right? But then how can... No. no that's no. like when Aren't someone getting... takes a picture with you, too, and then they take the liberty of doctoring the picture, you know, trying to get rid of some red eyes or something yeah. and just change your face. Yeah, can't red, have it. All red eyes might make it look as though your mouth is big enough to swallow a cantaloupe. Uh, st st stuff like that. <laughs> all time. I've been... my. The photos that are on the internet of me are very uh, uh, vast. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of different sizes of me. Sure. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different uh, places of me. Yep. You know, a lot of that stuff. But boy, one thing's normally common. If I'm in a state where something is legal, for whatever reason, I just can't get my eyes open in those photos. Mm -hmm. And boy, tired, man. Sleepy. Always tired. You know, Post Malone actually just did this mm -hmm. right. for the photos. You know, I might have to do that so people know that. But there's some people that have tried to correct that in their photos with me. I think they're trying to make me not look bad. You're like, hey, this guy looks like he's like incredibly stoned right now. Let's try to help him. And then in turn, my face becomes like Mr. Potato Head. Yeah, you look like wacko. Just plucking on eyeballs. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a whole thing. AJ, we, then I got the people that say they look like me all the time. That's something. Cause I'm That's awesome. I mean, you re I'm sure you react well when the person has like long, dark hair and doesn't look like you at all. Yeah, I'm pretty fuckboy white prototype <laughs> so there's a lot of people that look like me you know and then i get those tweets it's a lot of fun aj is one of one except for um that sculpture Dolph long oh horse oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, crazy horse crazy, crazy horse? horse yep you and crazy horse are twins a lot of people think you look like woody harrelson too yep people wow. people do tell me that yeah congratulations super handsome i'm okay with it i love that guy i'm okay with it Dolph. that's yeah. who's playing you in the movie you think no denzel i always say that <laughs> I love Denzel. Let's go to the Me too. Said that from day one. Equalizer 3 coming soon.
That's going to be tough, though, bro, I think. like Why? Because he's like 60? No, just, you know, I think people will get mad if, if Denzel's playing you just because the world we're in right now. Mm-hmm. Well, I agree. Like, I'm definitely not, like, yeah, like, I, I, don't, I don't have the stature to have Denzel play me. That's why people are upset. Like, I need <laughs> to have a bigger man for that. Exactly. You're not handsome. You're not handsome enough or badass enough. I'm not. Yeah, that's We're the talented reason. enough. That guy's unbelievable. Yeah. I just watched uh, what if American Denzel- Gangster the other night. Ooh, oh, so good, dude. Frank Lucas. Frank Lucas, he just wants Harlem back. So, mm-hmm. That's all he wants. Um, imagine if he went whiteface to play A.J. Hawk. Oh, how, bad. how mad people would get. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. They would be <laughs> irrationally upset about it. Yeah, they would. <laughs> so mad. Let's talk about what did happen with Schultz. Let's go back in time here a little bit. We've done two film studies of our show today. Bug hit me in the back of the throat early. And then lastly with Schultz here, we had a dynamic camera angle and video setup. We are 100% sure that we will be the only show that will ever have this as the full screen <laughs> ever in the history of ESPN. Yep. I, I, will, I will assume. No doubt about I it. can't wait for that. He doesn't notice. <laughs> no, he, he does doesn't. Not. That's what makes what does it the look like so on his funny. screen. He it must think like it's like that. a glitch. It's exactly what you see, AJ. Yeah, but he must think it's okay. like a glitch. Like this can't be what the show actually is. When it's he's... very noticeable on my end, by the way. It's very noticeable. <laughs> Pretty noticeable on our end. Too. Yeah. The only yeah. thing I can imagine is he's on his iPhone and he really can't, can't see the screen. See yeah, that makes sense. That's the only Or he's thing. just staring at himself the whole time and he doesn't notice what's happening around him. He's a pro's pro. No, he doesn't on. let those things distract him or bother him. I'll tell you what. When I look like a real jackass some days, every once in a while I'll get a glimpse of me up there on the screen and I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. 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 happens that, to me yeah. too. Let's go back yeah. to a Almost full. Let's go back to uh, one of those. You know, I start thinking <laughs> yep. I start thinking of doing that in the middle of the conversation. We don't do enough of this, AJ. Yeah. You know what? I don't think we do enough of this. What's that? The one shot on me? Yeah. 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 I, you know, I have the control to do that. I don't know if you know that. It, it's been added to my desk here. I can oh, do this. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. So I will have the control there on Fridays during the season, huh? <laughs> no, I'll take it with me because. Yeah, you'll break it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you'll pack it up. <laughs> it has, this one stays with me. This thing, <laughs> yep. this thing stays with Get me. Get your own. But every once in a while, you'll be like doing a, you know, a pretty good promo, and I have to like grab something or like say something mm-hmm. to the back, and I'm just sitting here. I'm like listening, 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 but it's like, I don't know how long age is going to be talking. How long do we have to get this answer? So all of a sudden we, you know, implored this thing and I can do this and then I can talk to the back real quick and then we can come back into this thing and then boom, bang. So that's new with the, with the upgrades a couple weeks ago that came in. Yeah. There's all this lighting too. I don't know if you saw the lighting whenever Foxy zoomed out. All these lights are new, and the reason why you'll know that is because they're lights in our studio. Right. Mm-hmm. We didn't have lights before. <laughs> no. We were the only studio in the history of a show <laughs> mm-hmm. that had zero lights and paid for lights. Got a lighting company here. Mm-hmm. They said lights are good. And then as we went on the air, we quickly realized we have no lights. No. no. Not good. But not an easy thing to do. Like, the amount of... They have, like, these sensors yeah. and light. Like, how heavy is the light here? Light meters or whatever. Yeah, they check it all out. Aperture is another word, I guess, it's being used a lot. Dims? Any dims? Uh, The dims are obviously being discussed at all times when it comes to lighting. Good. Because how far can it reach? But, yeah, we have lights for the first time. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they're sweet. We got a lot of shit coming in, bro. Bringing in a uh, makeup person from ESPN? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Schultz, he's a guy. That was asked in the hole. So where will makeup be? Will you be... Paying them, I'm like, there would all be a makeup. Are you sure it's television? <laughs> yeah. That'd be amazing. First day back, everyone has full face of cake and makeup. <laughs> like everybody, the whole, the whole face. Also, like, do we want to punish this person trying to make us attractive every day? No uh, way. This person doesn't need to wake up and be like, here we go, more tricks. Give me your fucking faces. Mm-hmm. We don't need that. We don't want that. I get uncomfortable with makeup on, to be honest with you. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm a sweater. So I'm always like, so is this makeup running right now? And like, can everybody tell that I am? feels like it's pretty thick caked on my face. I'm very moist right now. What is happening? And you never really know. I would just like to remain my classic red faced human being for the rest mm-hmm. of my life. But there's a lot of TV companies that don't want that on mm-hmm. their television. Can't touch your face. Or anything either, or else you'll fuck it all up. Yeah, what about if I yeah. blow my nose? Bang, bang. Yeah. They just don't want you super shiny. I know that. They just don't want your face all shiny. That's yeah. why they try to, like, mute that. And I think WWE, that's a big thing. We don't need you shiny or play something like it's 1,000 degrees in here. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Give me, can I get an air conditioner underneath the desk? That'd be great. And I block person. Michael Cole like it? Does he like makeup? I think it's just part he, of the job. Can't tell. I mean, he looks, he looks the same, I feel like, on TV. There's, WWE has a very talented group of... Mm-hmm. Sh- sh- 
you know, mm-hmm. quick. Painters. Yeah. See you later. How you doing? They're very because they do. I mean, they're working 52 weeks a year, yeah. yeah, numerous times. That crew is a very talented one. I don't know how they survive, to be honest with you. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. He's got to stand for like 10 hours straight, mm-hmm. four times a week in four different cities. Yeah. It's a lot of traveling. They're doing good. Hey, keep going. Yeah, keep crushing it. Let's go to the phones and get the fuck out of here. Okay. Mm-hmm. What do you guys got this weekend? Anything awesome, Ty? What are you doing? Watching some games? Yeah, that's about it. I'm not really doing anything. Are you getting excited about Hair Jordan? Air Jordan? Uh, love story? Tonight, baby. 7 p.m. on NFL Network. Who we got? What? Bengals what? in Cincy. Well, is that one of the games that you want to pick for us, uh, Tone Diggs, as we gamble in the preseason very, very dumbly? It, it was, but after Jordan Love, I didn't really trust Sean Clifford, who is a 25-year-old rookie. He's actually older than Jordan Love. And then you got a guy named Alex McGuff uh, coming oh, in there. He's a fucking U.S. Yeah. FL to come back for the, yeah. for the Packers, so I didn't really trust that one. Uh, the four I'm looking at this weekend, one of them is tonight, the Broncos, okay? Right there, bottom right corner. Broncos, Cardinals, five and a half. Sean Payton has said these boys are going to play, and they're going to play hard. Uh, I think Russ is supposed to get like 20 snaps, and then he's followed by Jared Sidham, who is a very good backup Dog. and preseason, preseason quarterback, followed by old Ben DiNucci there. Whoa. Uh, wow. DiNucci? Yeah, go. The Broncos, for so, sure. I like DiNucci. the Broncos, and they're going up uh, against the Cardinals, who are going to play some starters. Uh, they uh, said, guess. Yeah, case-by-case case situation. <laughs> uh, the next one I like no is your Indianapolis Colts tomorrow. Okay. Um, so they go Anthony Richardson. So that'll be fun. And then you have Gardner, and then you have the best preseason quarterback in all of the land last year, Mr. Sam Ellinger, uh, who's going – they're going up against the Bills, who they said Josh Allen won't play, so it's going to be Kyle Allen and then (laughs) whatever. Anthony Richardson's undefeated! Yep. Uh, After that, I kind of like the Panthers against the Jets. So you got Bryce Young, Andy Dalton, Matt Corral still looking to make a name still. And then – because against – you know, Roger, he's not playing – uh, so you got Zach Wilson, and and then you got Tim Boyle. Who I mean, they were okay, but I, I kind of like the Panthers there. And then the last one that I really like, I'm going to probably be on them all all preseason long. This one's on Sunday. Mm. The 49ers. Oh, Uh-oh. I thought it was going to be Ravens because how good. They well, were. yeah, I, not the Ravens have won 23 straight. Okay. That's what I thought you were going to say. Right? I think we all thought yeah, but, you were going to say Ravens, but, and we were like, wow, Tone. But they're Ravens. getting. Yeah. I mean, the, at six points is a lot in the preseason. They're playing the Eagles, who. The Eagles have a, a good quarterback room, too. After Hurts, they got Mariota, uh, and then a couple of guys. So, yeah, I mean, Ravens, sure, maybe. 23 straight is pretty impressive. Niners, though, you got that quarterback room going up against. They're definitely not playing Jimmy Joy G. And then it's Hoyer and then Aiden O'Connell out of Purdue, who's pretty good. But, I mean, I like the San Francisco quarterback room. So those are my four that I'm rolling with. Okay, uh, Broncos, for- Colts, Panthers, Niners. Go. Go ahead and let's see if we can hit some. Tone, 2-0 and oh last night. Okay. Hey, baby, Tone. Hey. Tone had the Texans and Seahawks last night. Are we turning the corner? Hopefully. Like Are it. we getting hot? I think so. We shall see. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Eddie in San Diego. What's going on, Eddie? Cat, AJ, boys. How we doing? Keep it moving. Hell, Hell yeah, yeah Eddie. Hell yeah. What do you want to talk about, buddy? Hey, so you guys were talking about Bakhtiari potentially getting traded to the Jets. Do you guys really think it is a possibility with him being such an advocate against turf fields, knowing that he would have to play eight to nine games mm. at home on Ooh. turf? Good point. Interesting, Eddie. I, I mean, that is certainly something to think about, an added element. I just assumed it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's no. not. That's what I just assumed. It's not going to happen. Is nope. that, is that what... he, he makes too much money, doesn't he, to trade him right now? Yes. Yeah, they cleared a lot with Rodgers. But it, they would have got rid of him. Yes. I think they would have, have we heard anything about them trying to move him earlier? I don't think so, right? No. There's been no like rumblings, right? We haven't heard really anything. It no. feels like a wish list much more than a reality, but I mean, who knows? It's the NFL. Yeah. Potential I, out. It's not going to happen. Okay. What if it did? Then it does. But And you feel I mean, a, I'm not going to fucking cry or spill milk if it happens. You know, I want him to play out there, but if he's gone, he's gone. That's the NFL, baby. Next man up. Interesting. Move Jenkins out there. Could you imagine Bakhtiari at a New York Rangers game chugging those beers down? Yeah. Oh, my. How about he goes to, um, what was it, Saved by the Belt? What was the uh, the play that uh, – Broadway? Yeah, wasn't it Saved by he the Belt? He did go to Saved by the Bell recently. Saved by the yeah. Bell, yeah. He goes to Saved by the Bell. He's chugging beers on stage with Saved by the Bell cast. Him and Zach Morris are up there high-fiving with Aaron Rodgers watching. And they get the whole gang. Green Bay East, if Bakhtiari ends up at the Jets – I Packers fans. That'd be crazy. The amount of spite that is probably going to oh, have to get built up. What has to be? What's that, pal? That, that'd be crazy. I mean, but there, there is absolutely no way that they're going to trade him to the Jets. 
Yeah. Pitch Perfect was the movie. Correct. Saved by the Bell was the play that yeah. Aaron Rodgers went to uh-huh. off Broadway. Yes. I'm cultured, Zito. Please come on, Zito. Please, when I'm talking Broadway, I, listen. I thought you were talking about him and Pitch Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, he was Perfect. phenomenal. Yeah. Great in that. Great actor. And if they take that to Broadway. Yeah, Boom. they bite. Slide them right mm-hmm. in. Exactly. Good call, ZD, baby. Good call. Let's go to Griffin in Florida. What part of Florida are you in? How hot is it? That, boys. How you doing? Keep it moving. I'm in St. Pete. Right in the middle. It's about 108 today. Oh, yeah. Humidity, though, low. It's a dry heat. It's a dry heat. Yeah. It is. As soon as I step out, it's sticky. Yeah, that's Florida. Hi, it's St. Pete. You guys get this in uh, uh, winter and fall, though, while we're cold with rain. Yeah. So we. Uh, that's right. I'm gonna, go ahead. I'm going to be playing golf when it's 80 on Christmas time. <laughs> How's your game? Getting better. Getting better. Breaking right. 90 now. Okay. Oh, oh. All right. What do you want to talk Just about, pal? Uh, you know, we've come a long way. Been watching for a long time. Talking about new lights coming in. You got a makeup person from ESPN. You know, I want to see if we can go even higher. Listen better. I want to know where we stand with getting Scott Stapp on the show. Oh, Oh, Griffin. Can you take me higher? That was a good question, Griffin. Don't blow any surprises. Maybe next, uh, next draft, like we had the magician this year. Well, Well, Michael Michael Collins or Michael Michael Griffin. Michael Malone. Yeah, Michael Malone. Please. No. Michael Malone America's is the head coach of the Denver Nuggets. Escape artist. We like him. Yes. Yeah. But the, the America's greatest ex- escape artist is Michael Griffin. And I'm sick of you guys. I thought it was Anderson. I'm, I'm pretty I'm sure, sick of you sure guys. was it Michael Collins? Michael, Michael Collins, Collins is comedy. comedy. Yeah. Big part of that. Um, big part of a story about somebody meeting Phil Mickelson mm. oh, yeah, yeah, at yeah. the halfway house of yep. golf course. And him signing. A good positive story. Very oh, positive yeah. Phil story. Yeah, yeah. it was well, very good timing for that. Good Phil. That's Memorial here. That's the Memorial, yeah. Oh, is that who that was? It was uh, yeah, I guess was because you? he said Ohio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was it your right cool with the Memorial Tournament, yeah. All right. Let's um anyways, Phil Mickelson gambled a billion dollars over four years. Sue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. He didn't refute that. He just came out and said right. I did not bet on the Ryder Cup. Yeah. He said, I had a problem. I know. Yeah. We get it. It's documented. But I've gotten help. It's under control now, though. After the two two days after the Bryson video comes out, like yep. it's under it's just under control now. Yeah, that's an actual grand I'm betting now. And look, you heard what I was just doing. So, a thousand dollar bets much better than two hundred and twenty or five hundred and sixty or six hundred and forty thousand dollar bets on things or twenty thousand dollar five game long shot parlays. Mm-hmm. I was just popping those off on the reg, bro. Yeah. What are we talking about? I was just doing. Now I'm betting a thousand with Bryson DeChambeau for nine holes and could only half. Mm-hmm. Can't full press. That's right. It's only another 500. Exactly. Sue me. Yeah. Should have seen what I was betting with Jordan. Oh. I bet that is astronomical. Yeah. yeah, me too. Probably a couple million or even higher stakes. 10 Gs. Maybe. Well, Very yeah. high stakes. You're Very right. high stakes. Yeah. Yeah. I would bet those two gambling with each other. They're friends, right? right? Aren't they? Don't they know each other well? I think so. I, I think, think they run so. the same circle. Yeah. yeah. Or they used to. What are you doing? What's wrong? You got another bug? <laughs> Run in the same circle was incredibly clever for what you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you what know. you're implying? Let's go to the phones. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's Let's go to Today James in New York. Thing. James, what's going on, pal? That was funny. That was really uh, good. AJ, how we doing? Keep yeah, moving. Good. Hell yeah. You ain't lying. Just needed to shed some info into this weird situation, boys, with this JPA football. Uh, is this him? Seems to be elaborate, you know. I'm no, it's not. Get out of here with that, you know. But your suspicions, oh, your suspicions oh, are right. You're right. So, you know, I used to be a Washington R-word fan. You know, back in the day, Baltimore Colts, Johnny Unitas, black high tops. He was sick. They leave. Sick with the skins. Great years ahead, whoa, whoa, right? Whoa, whoa. Doug Williams. How old is this Doug guy? Williams, yeah. Bergen, Sounds and young. Mark Griffin, right? That's him. great. So. Dan- Snyder gets the team. I get Mark Brunel, Rex Grossman, Jason Campbell. That's Pretty great. Good. Still love the RG3. team. RG3. Kirk. Sick. Still sick. Still looking for content, awesome. right? So I stumble on Twitter. I find this account, right? It's uh, our word today, right? And he's throwing oh. out these emotional, personal tweets, exactly. And about player performance, come to find out a few seasons ago, it's a 17 year old kid just spitting out bullshit info. And now he's running this JPA football account and probably those other accounts too. 
And then uh, he's in this Twitter fight with Ben Standing of The Athletic right now about stealing content right now. So it's just popping off. Needless to say, Washington's dead, and I'm a fan of the Shield like our boy Rob Lowe. Uh, hey, James, I don't know how much of what you just said was accurate or not, because for that to be true, you would have to be like a 50-year-old man. Are you? You're very old. No, no, no. My family. Look, I got a little gabagool in me, so my family runs deep. Uh, so got I was it, born it. into uh, to Washington, you know, all that. All right, got it. And you know that that's who JPA football is, or that you're just kind of piecing some things together, thinking no, it's. Hundo. Hundo. No, Hundo. 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 P. Hundo. 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 Cap Hundo. 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 No, no cap. Thank you. No cap. No cap. Liddy, Liddy, Liddy. All right. Okay. Thank you, James. No cap. All right. Is that how this guy, this gentleman speaks? Is that why you're regurgitating his lines? Who's? What's that? Who? No cap, Liddy? Well, everything's Liddy and no cap. No, that's it's usually not how con man talks. It's feel good Friday. That's just how the vibe is, bro. Oh, okay, cool. All right. That, that's cool. Quit Liddy. tripping. Don't be a mitt, bro. Yeah, come on, dude. Yeah. Don't be a mitt. killing the vibe, bro. Mitt is so excited right now. Hey. We can see. Uh, yeah, Mitt's, see Mitt's been screaming no cap for yeah. three hours. Oh, God, bro. Bro, this is all cap, bro. Let uh, me have a mic. In that shirt, yeah. 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 Yes. No doubt. What's on, what's, on, uh, what's on the docket for this weekend, Mitt? Honestly, let's, <laughs> let's not embarrass the program. Okay? Please. Oh, fucking Don't be what is the docket for this weekend? Probably... Go out with the buddies, hang out, watch some football, you know, bet yes. on some games. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it sounds like that's what you're going to do. Probably get like three or four car accidents. <laughs> yeah. get Everybody my else's fault. Yeah. Yeah, get, my, uh, get my laptop stolen. Break you. Someone breaks into my apartment, hopefully. I have a homeless yeah. man living with me now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, anyways, have a good one. Be safe. Don't embarrass the program, <laughs> man. Yeah. Mitt. The last part is the most important, Mitt. I'm hey, was that the was that the first time you played the the Tony Stewart video, or do you run that before? First time during the commercial. First time. Okay, first. that was a sweet video. You guys, hell of a job! Like drone shots mixed in the uh, cuts, then you you're highlighting who who is in each car. Like that was a hell of a job. Yeah, Foxy. Obviously, Zito's our drone pilot. Solid on the sticks. Oh yeah, it's a lot of editing. A lot of editing in that video. It looked like. Oh yeah, Foxy took a crack at it, kind of knocked it down. Yep. And then our guy talk. Uh, kind of came in at the end and put the finishing touches on it. Mm. Old Casey, that baby be talking. That baby, hell yeah, talk. Hey. What an awesome, uh, what an awesome track that they built right out yeah. there in the parking lot. Are you Crazy. kidding me? That was sweet. It was unbelievable. It was yeah. awesome. fast. I, I don't think I fully knew what to expect or to, you know, mm. that whole thing. Those carts were moving. Mm -hmm. We're talking about like drifting and stuff like that. What I think is the most impressive though is. Tony went from fourth place to first place in a matter of seconds. Yeah, blink of an eye. He's so good. There's like, you watch him like do stuff, and it's like, oh my god, how do you make the car do that? Like the he's pulling G's on this golf cart, yeah. and it's not slipping at all. Because when you slip, you lose power. That's when you lose speed. So you're trying not to slip while hitting the apex. That's why you swing wide so you don't lose any of the momentum or anything. And him just being able to figure out the course, uh, yeah, and mm -hmm. then just be pedal flat. The entire time, pretty much. Mm -hmm. It's like, this fucker's unbelievable. Yeah. He just won again this weekend. Yeah, he did. Just won another race this weekend in a truck, I think. He's Beast. Truck. Is he going to Eldora soon? That's in Ohio. It's a dirt track. I assume Probably. he'll be there. He might have just won I think there. he owns it. I think he owns that one. Some driver owns it. That dude just loves racing. He does. Love Lives racing. for it. He does. How about him whenever he said he's driving on the road? He's like, yeah, I'm very aggressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm happy to hear Wish that. Wish he had a plow at the front of his car. To not do most guys do that? No, uh, <laughs> do, he, do most guys drive, I guess? Uh, like he retired from NASCAR for everything, and then it seems like he's driving more than ever now. Seems like he did not love the NASCAR business. No. Mm. Okay. I think. I don't know. I don't know if that was the case. Because you heard him start talking about, yeah, they got all these young guys that are racing. I assume they're cheaper, the drivers. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh. Probably mm. cheaper. Like, I, I would assume that I, we didn't ask enough or elaborate enough, but as I continued to think about what he said, I thought it was a pretty important line when he said there's no stars really driving. I would assume the NASCAR people thought the cars were the stars. Right, just like you know, you remember when the NFL was like. That's not the case, but yeah. No, it's not. No, exactly. That's like when the NFL said there's no dancing, uh, there's no <laughs> uniform. Like you're not allowed to have any uniform differences. They just wanted to be able to just put players in uniforms, and like the uniform is the star, not the player. Yeah. It's like NASCAR with his answer, <laughs> with his answer seemingly doing that. Ladies and gentlemen, he is off. He is about to shit his oh, Connor, no. Connor, you hold that sign There up. he goes. He literally, uh -oh. he showed me this sign. He showed me this sign <laughs> about 
half a second ago. Good luck in there, Ty. Go get him, Ty. Oh. Good luck in there, Ty. Can someone follow him with the camera in there? Can someone get some audio, maybe? We got H&R. What Cat the Hall. hell, Hawk? Oh, you're right. You can't H&R. film in the bathroom. H&R? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking weirdo. H&R. My bad. Forget about the H&R. Let's go to Kevin and Compton. Hell yeah. What's going on, Kevin? Got a call from Compton. I don't know how many shows Foxy's have that. has got a history in that. What's going on, man? This is the second time. Happy Feel Good Friday, Friday, boys. How you doing? Keep, Keep it moving. moving. Hell yeah. So, so before I get into I'm a Jets fan. been a Jets fan my whole life. Before I get into that, shout out to you for always shouting out Compton when you can. Shout out to Pac-Man for wearing that easy jerk shirt. Yeah, one yeah. Q one. So, the guy brought it up earlier. I was going to bring it up about Bakhtiari, but also maybe Zach Martin can be an option for offensive line. Um, heading out there for week one again. So excited for that. But, yeah, been a Jets fan my whole life. Uh, Do you think your line's again, a problem? Do you think your line's a problem, man? Oh, uh, I don't th- – all right, look, I'm delusional. I don't think we have a problem. <laughs> I think that's the weakest weakest part we have on our team. I like that. Uh, I, I think that. that's the weakest part we have on our team because – uh, Makai Beckton, that's the, probably the biggest question. Uh, we got to see what he's going to do. But, I mean, we can add Bakhtiari and Zach Martin on those deals that, uh-huh. you know, the, the Steelers got go. for uh, Allen Robinson where wow. the Rams are paying for about 30% of that, I mean, like 80% of that uh, salary. That's funny. That's, uh, those would be great deals. Now, Kevin, yeah. we appreciate you calling. We hope you have a great weekend. They said the interior really good. Yeah, Elijah yeah. Tucker and McGovern are their two strong points. So if Zach Martin's looking for a new deal to become a very highest paid guy, I don't know if the Jets will spend that particular money. But, I mean, who knows at the tackle position, honestly. Yeah. It, it, you need a tackle. Yeah, and if Dwayne Brown comes back and he's good, there's one. And if Makai Becton is good and he's 20 pounds lighter than he's ever been, there's the other. This one's for Ty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If this one went in. This one's for Ty. Ty made it to the toilet. What wipes for everyone? For Ty. <sighs> he shit his pants to uh, me. Yeah. Oh, he, he oh my like God. Up, 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 is that daily? Pants. Does that happen every day? Uh, no, that's first time in like two months. Yeah. But he had, I forget what he was eating before the show like an asshole. It was something. It was uh, Jim and Nick. It was, uh, I don't want to throw it out there because, you know, it's a, it's a good company. Chick fil A, right? Yeah. yeah. He had, Chick fil A makes him dump his pants? So I think it, it fried stuff really. I think because he... Man, I don't know. Gets to him. I'm telling you, but it's not just that. I'm sure he had, like, two energy drinks. He probably put 14 yeah. Zin in his mouth. I mean, yeah, probably. the guy is... Well, he's got... Didn't he get a bunch of his stuff taken out, too? He had, a, he had all kind of stomach things. Yeah, and he's yeah. still able to hand... After well, Adam Cole, yeah. Yeah, he still goes after Cole it. Cole almost killed him. Yeah, Adam Cole, that asshole. And you like him, AJ. Where, where is he right now? AEW. He's with MJF right now. They're a tag team. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're talking about Hogan's birthday the other day. Yeah, yeah. he was just trending the other day. Yeah, because I believe what MJF said was, with how pale and skinny Adam Cole is, if he was around back in the '80s, Hogan would have snorted him. Yep, <laughs> pretty good line. Happy birthday, Hogan. That's very good line. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday, Hogan. That's good bars there from MJF. Pretty good with the stick, obviously. But as soon as I heard about Adam Cole, I'm like. Phew. I ain't never heard more true statement, brother. Uh-huh. I don't know <laughs> how. Uh, I don't know how I didn't think of that myself. You know that whole thing. They are an electrifying tandem. Very electrifying. Yes. Happy birthday to Hug, you know. Happy birthday, Hope. Happy birthday, brother. And MJF said that on me. Yes, that was a good line. And I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know what the criteria was. No, it was a good joke. There it is. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Bottom yes. of the bucket. Huh. Yeah. Splash. Mortar. Splash. Have a great weekend, everybody. Splash. Okay. I thought that was Ty. It's Bill. Bill McComas walking through the gym. Bill, you want to make any announcements about your membership to the gym, uh, to the Hawk House? Come on, Bill. Bill? Come on. Bill? Listen, there's nothing wrong with taking your time, you know, doing your rest days. And, you know, if you have a big project coming up in the weekend, maybe you don't want to deadlift on a Friday. All right. So how many bodies are you cut up this weekend? No, well, you know, that's not. Wood chipper, like right? The wood chipper. No, he's building a deck. To, to for what? What of is course it under, he is. What's under the deck? Let me tell you what happened. My first time exactly. seeing Bill squat in here was on Tuesday. We haven't seen his fucking ass since. Nope. We have not seen him in that gym since. Nope. He came in the next day and said, it's my rest day while we're lifting. You know what I mean? <laughs> on Wednesday? Came in there, it's my rest day. I go, two days on and I'm off and then two days on. And then Thursday comes, no, no Bill. Uh-oh. No Bill. No appearance. And then Friday today comes... No Bill, and he shows up with 13 do- a baker's dozen of donuts. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, Bill, not only do you quit on us in here, but also now you're trying to poison us. Hmm. We want to use it. It's a feel good Friday. I'm trying to be a good member. It's, 
He quit on us, AJ. That's why. That's how I see it. I don't well, like I don't. He, he could do deadlifts on Friday and build a deck all weekend. Bill is tough enough. He's he doesn't have to be worried about being a little bit sore to build that deck and bury those bodies. I think him squatting. Yeah, Ty's Ty's dumping right double, now. A double we flush. Hear flush, the toilet flush. flush. You, hear, oh, you hear the toilet. Two, two, yeah. two flushes have happened here. I was so. hoping you could hear his voice like screaming or something. Yeah, yeah well, it's a double right, flush. Good. Yeah, I mean, there's, you listen there, closely. I don't think he's done. I, I think there's a couple more flushes on the way. For sure. <laughs> For sure. We hope Ty feels better. We hope you have an incredible weekend. AJ, great work this week, pal. Good hey boy, Hawk. Hey, you too. You're not here on Monday, right? No, I got Brady's event. Tom? He's in town now. I haven't seen him yet. Is he living there now? No, he came in. Uh, he's got his event on Monday. He holds every year here, his charity deal. That's where you take the golf cart into the pond? Uh, the very first one. The golf cart malfunctioned, and I was responsible for it, yes. Nope, you were drunk, drove it right into a pond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody lost everything, including chopper smokes. Yeah. So, Bones I mean, let's not make that happen. And baby, Ty. Oh, boy, Ty. Oh, look at that. Way to make it back. <laughs> Did it. Good hustle. It's, he's not done, probably. No, no, His no. His pants no. look good. No. Way to poop and rally, bro. Oh, thank you. You know what I mean? We didn't know if you're going to make it back for the end of the program. That's a quick one. Think about that on ESPN for the yeah, first time. Yeah, but we time. heard two of them. We heard yep. two of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, well, I had to give Curse a plush because, boy, does it not smell good in there. So I'd give it, <laughs> I'd give it a little bit. <laughs> Tone, great work this week, pal. Me too, baby, hey, Tone. Toxic table, really good stuff. Happy you're here for this, Ty. Me too. Ty, we were just going around the room, and I guess we'll get you now because we got everybody else. What was your absolute favorite moment of the week? Nice thousand words or so. Thousand words or so. Yeah, uh, everybody else did it. Giving their answers. Yeah. Okay. Um, honestly, that might have been my favorite part of the week, <laughs> right there. I haven't had a good dump in a couple days, and uh, I knew I was gambling when I got Chick Fil A this morning at about ten fifteen. Spicy chicken sandwich, you know, bacon, extra a couple pieces of uh, American cheese on there. I said, what? "Hey, this is this is a dangerous move," because we usually know how this game ends. My stomach was feeling fine pretty much all show, and then about. 256 i said oh boy i'm gonna shit my pants i really am got in just in time and it was one of those things where you don't even have to waste any time you sit down and then just eject game on eject code and red exactly and uh i was smart enough i because i, I kind of had a feeling this morning as i'm leaving my house i said you know what fucking grab your wet wipes wow put them in your backpack you might need them today. that's a big play and i did so congratulations I was give me a bidet give me a bidet we should have those to be honest though the way they set up the bathroom yep. the toilets where they put the toilet paper holder is actually right where your leg would be oh yeah, yeah. so you actually have to sit kind of sideways on it and i don't know if the bidet <laughs> would actually you know it's yeah. really well done professionals you know people that have done yeah. this, mm -hmm. millions of times so yep. why are you asking that question we're the professionals just those little <laughs> things you know those all happen it's amazing all right well thank you you were the last one to do that okay do you want to guess what some of the other answers were from other people yeah yeah um i assume connor maybe took another crack at uh schultzy what do you think he said if you had to go exactly as what you thought he said, what do you think he said? I really enjoyed seeing, you know, Clayface making his national oh, TV debut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what, you, yep. what about Tone? What do you think Tone said? Uh, <laughs> Tony? Probably DeSantis. Yeah, well, no, because DeSantis is kind of starting yeah, to I got a new hit, guy. A, hit a couple bumps. Oh, we got a new, yeah, who you got? I got a new guy. Yeah, Tone Peel. Yo, opponent. really? I did not know that. Yeah, I switched oh, yeah. sides, actually. I was going to say, he, he, he's boring part oh. of lines. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Boy. Yeah. You're talking about the guy that is on all the TRT, I believe. Bingo. <laughs> I'm blue now, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have a clue. <laughs> yeah, but people think you do, and they get real mad. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. That's an easy crew to really rile up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Too yeah. easy, you really. Can really get them going over yeah. there. We, we got to try not to do that as much, you know? Like, well, I just want to let people know, though, like, if we wanted to be a negative program, like a lot of sports media is, like, if we wanted to talk shit on people, boy, I think we'd be very good at it. If oh. this entire show was just sawing people down, we would we would be prolific. We'd have a good time. I think. We try not to do that. But every once in a while, we, we don't mind just, like, you know, just kind of riling Turn up some a little people. Not at all. Riling some people up. To rile up the political community is the easiest thing to do on earth at this stage. Mm -hmm. It's almost to the point where it's almost like hacky. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Bit. It's almost like hacky. Mm -hmm. Too simple. Yeah, it's too easy. Mm -hmm. to Low-hanging fruit. Yeah. yeah. Like very educated people. You can get very educated people 
very upset. Fuming. Oh, yeah. So quick. Mm -hmm. So we need not do that like every day. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. We didn't do it today. <laughs> Just tried. Yep. No, well, AJ started it. AJ tried. No. <laughs> Um, they would emotion creep oh, in way that. too much. Say one thing and they think you're they're you're attacking their whole family and everyone yeah. they've ever known. Yeah, and it's it's they're supposed to be smarter and better than us. But in like the sports world, we're like, can't let your emotions creep in. And then the people that make decisions are like, can't let emotions creep into your decision making. And then the most important decisions in the world that guide around like our lives are basically all made on emotions. It's a very interesting It is. Mm -hmm. I'm happy we're not in that world, but also we need to stop fucking with that world as much. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. You guys stop it. I mean, next year is going to be so. You are. Rushing. That is your gimmick. Like. It is. You and Kevin Costner. I mean, Pop the guy's off. a master at falconry. How can you not love? Him? I mean, that takes a real. Kevin time. Costner is. No, 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 no. no. He's talking about Tony's new horse. Oh, he is really. When yeah. does that happen? That's next October. Year. Next. Next year. Yeah. November? November. November of next year. November of next year. It's yep. going to be so away. loud, dude. It's going to be sick. People are going to be so smart. This is just like when Bitcoin came over and everybody was a Bitcoin genius. Mm -hmm. It's like whenever stocks started happening Boxing. and everybody was a stock market genius. Stonk, stonk, we're doing this, we're doing Everybody knew. Everybody was talking about these coins that are going to go to the, I mean, NFTs, people, everybody became a genius. And then when these Metaverse. Like, bingo. Metaverse, mm -hmm. everybody became a genius somehow. It's like, how the fuck do you know? When like elections come around, People are geniuses all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. They just know everything about everything. Well, you know, the gas prices are actually because of blah, blah, blah. It's like, mm -hmm. who the fuck told you that? I'm sure you know. That's what's fun about it. I'm sure you know. The, the best is the panel show where you they, they pop it up on the wide shot because they have to, and there's 11 people at the desk Come for like on, a six-minute segment. I'm like, is this really the best way to do it? Well, everybody's got to be represented. Every idea counts, and everybody needs to see how they're feeling on the TV. That's right. Mm -hmm. Let it rip. No matter what channel is. Let her rip, Sue Chef. Mm -hmm. Let's get the hell out of here. I'm happy we're in the sports world because it does appear if that presidential election is coming up next year, their world is about to be mm -hmm. full chaos. Oh, yeah. yep. So much yelling at each other. Mm -hmm. So much yelling. So much of you're wrong. For sure. But we do get uh, I'm pumped. NBC back. What do you mean? Cornac. Steve Cornack. Steve Cornack. Oh, Maps. Yeah. Yep. Cornack. Is he doing Sunday Night Football still? Yeah, yes. I think so, before. yeah. And the Kentucky Derb. Yep. yep. And the Olympics, whenever that oh. comes back. And the Olympics, yeah. But remember, his bread and butter yeah. is. Let me zoom in. To, to, look Counts. at this county right here. Counties. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we were to judge this versus the 1996 election, what we're seeing here is a very similar type of uh, response that we saw then. Uh, maybe it's because of how people are feeling uh, geopolitically, but then you zoom out, you go into this town in Alabama, boom, you check this. Oh, now we got a trend. Oh, is that, Which probably tells us to zoom out. Now, let's go over here in Mississippi. Probably going to be, yup, just like I thought. Let me check. Call it. Yup. That just, we are in a position to go ahead and say, yeah, that's mm -hmm. probably what's going to happen. I mean, that, that's where I first found this fucking guy. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, look at this wizard of Master so at work. I don't know. I don't know anything about that whole world, but boy. Like Orslovsky. Dane could do that. He's good on the board. He, you fucking watch your mouth. Not like Kornacki, brother. Dan Orlovsky could do what Kornacki does. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> about Steve on Orlovsky. Dan Orlacki. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Dan Orlacki. Dan Orlacki. Mm hmm. You guys. What? Yeah, great this is so Those two together. To Imagine them two on the I board can't together. We're doing this. What are you talking? I cannot believe we're even comparing Denerlowski to fucking Kornacki. Are you guys serious, or are you just fucking around? No, we're I'm being serious. serious. I'm dead okay. serious. Well, you guys are all idiots, then. What are you talking about? Steve Kornacki is one on one. There will never not, be Al Roker too. I'll he, throw Al Roker in there too. What, what, you know, this is what's happening in your neck of the woods. I understand that. Yeah. But when Orlovsky brings out the little blue <laughs> line. Yeah. What does Orlovsky have in his hand the entire time? An iPad. Kornacki is strictly on the board. That board is an iPad. Yes, but he is only touching the board. Orlovsky has to fucking look down at his thing. He's got a harder job. Handheld. No, he doesn't. It's so much easier. Do you operate on a device that is closer to an iPad or a fucking board? Well, the board would be easier because you just got to go. So much harder. Longer range. Everything. Everything for an <laughs> iPad just right in your hand. This fucking big. Dan Orlowski loves the deep ball. He would no oh, problem Oh, loves the deep ball. Dan Orlowski threw 80 picks whoa, in his career. Whoa, in what, five whoa. games. Whoa. That's what a, are we talking about? What Korn I can't friend. believe you guys. That is so disrespectful. How many picks did Kornacki throw? None. Good point. That's a good point. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Good luck.
Orlovsky trying to get in a Kornacki's orbit. Yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> I guess it's not going to take place. <laughs> No Thank you for opening our eyes to that. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I'm still kind of pissed at you guys. So that's did Dan get? Did they announce what game? Like, uh, what crew he has? I know ESPN did that. So yeah. Dan, Dan said the A team. Uh, duh. I saw, Who's he with though? He's not doing college football. Not at no, all. Not this year at all. Now I saw him put a tweet out like they took me off college football I saw in, that. in response to somebody. And I'm like, <laughs> I sent him a text. I'm like, aren't you doing NFL games or something? Or is that? Are you doing? I assume you're. Did you want to do college football games? He was like, uh, yeah, I didn't mind doing it or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, I just read your tweet. Sounds like you're very, <laughs> very pissed. You're upset. Very unhappy you got about four it. Four NFL games, I thought. I think, yeah, I think he's doing NFL. I don't know. Because ESPN is going to probably, and I do not know. This is just something, because we are not working with the NFL department at ESPN. No. Which is funny to think about. You know? Well, who, uh, who got called up to the, the crew right below Kirk? Uh, um, Greg McElroy. Greg McElroy, yeah, he's on. He got promoted up there. Him Prime time Saturday Sean night. Sean McDonough. I like Greg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think he does really well. He's good. And then was it Osweiler? Or am I confusing him with someone else? Osweiler has done games, I think, for FS1, maybe. I didn't follow. There was an announcement like two days ago. I was just gonna say something just came out about him, but I forget what it was. Yeah. They announced their crews, I guess. All right. Well, everybody's gonna have a great season. That's right. For sure. It was. We're about to go watch a presentation from Jake Herbstreit because today's his last day of his internship. It's Good run, Herbie. Uh, what does he have to do, like a recap of what he learned or something? Yeah, he kind of take it however he wants it. You know, mm -hmm. we'll judge him for however he decided to take this presentation. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, hey, we just want some sort of presentation at the end of your internship. Well, what's it going nice. to be about? You, you Figure yeah. it out. Shut up and do it. Be, be creative, yeah. Yeah, is it what you learned? Is it what you saw? Is it what happened? Are you going to mock a bunch of people? I mean, there's just Oh, so you could take that in so many directions. Exactly. You could have some fun with that. And I would like to think, as boss of the place, I told him to explore the space. Exactly. I'm mm -hmm. not, you know what I mean? Hey, do what you got to do. Creative control. He did a great job there's last No wrong year. answers. Well, we'll there see. Are. There certainly will be wrong yeah. answers. Yeah, we will judge it. He's still an intern. If it's shitty, he's going to hear about it. It's our job to mold him like clay. Bingo. Ooh. Good call back. Into a human mm -hmm. who be a productive member of society mm -hmm. and not like anybody else, seemingly not everybody, but don't want to paint a broad brush. That generation, yeah. you know, we are trying our best here with Jake, but he's a good kid. Kirk did a great job. Great job. I know. All of them. Jake's taking out the trash. That kid grew up in like a 10,000 square foot house in Nashville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. with every single country musician and star as like an uncle and a friend. You know what I mean? Very cool. And he's taking out the trash over here, just like Schultz. Now, different levels, obviously. Schultz, we're selling coffee to everybody. Kirk Herbstreit, we're selling college football for 27 years is the face of it. You know, mm -hmm. it is still a little bit of a different. And now we're on Amazon. I mean, a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Ohio. I saw Jake when he was a little kid. Kirk came to speak to the team when I was in college. And he was standing at the podium, and he put Jake on the podium. He was that small, and him and his brother were there. And they, I remember them both standing there, and Kirk was awesome, gave a great speech. Well, exactly. That's a, Like, he got access to Ohio State as a kid. Like, not a lot of people get that, right? People dream of that. So he could act like an entitled punk, and he doesn't at all. He's a sweet boy. Yeah, he is. He's a very sweet, sweet boy. He's a sweet kid. <laughs> he is. He is. He is. He is. Picked me up from the airport one time when I came in there. He was there early waiting on me. It was great. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's a good dude. Hey, you did good, Jake. Well, I mean, we'll sure, see. Jake. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. I don't love all this ball washing before his pres presentation, you know, because if it sucks, then we're going to have to take all this back on Monday. We, which we will. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're stern but fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, a, he's done a great job this particular internship. He's done more than he did last time. Way better than sure. last year. Yep. Yeah. Growth. Yeah. Growth. What if this presentation is so bad? That's why I'm not saying anything yet. I got faith in her. Last year's was very good, so I'm hoping. It was. Well, that's the problem. Last year, it was like some of the things he learned, which seemingly hopefully paid off. Did he try to mix in humor and stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. A couple yeah. home run oh, nice. slides. Yeah. yeah, he out of nowhere, too. Slide pops in, and it's a dunk oh, on something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Send me that. Tell Jake, Jake, send me your deck. I want to check it out. I'm uh, if it's anything like last deck, I don't think Jake's going to want to be everybody to see that. You know, Probably I mean? film it. Well, just myself. Just me. Yeah. You know, somebody's going to hack into Jake, see who he dunked on. There was a couple internet personalities to Jake. Yeah. Oh, good for him. Okay. He's doing that. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That just pops out of nowhere. The there's night. plenty of, you know, there's a million ways you could. Get the boys excited by doing that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just anything that happened on the internet from when he started to now is kind of, I think, yeah. Yeah. Free, free game. Yeah. So there's Fair a plus. lot. You know, there's a I mean, lot. there's one slide I think about 
two to three times a week. Still, mm-hmm. year has been a year past. Just because of how sweet of a kid he is. Yeah, he's a sweet boy. You don't expect it out of him. Mm-mm, and then boy. all of a sudden, he's like he's breaking down what like our company does and what's important. And it's like, all right, this kid's kind of doing like. Uh, this is what I learned, business yeah. stuff. I'm like, I'm happy to hear that. And then the next one is like, uh, yeah. condescending mm-hmm. shot. Dunk, dunk on somebody so loud, like so loud. And then his delivery is just like a shy. And obviously, yeah. Yeah. it was good. <laughs> it, was. it was really, really good. All right, let's get to that. All right. Mm-hmm. Have a great weekend. Remember, it's going to be the Broncos, Colts, Panthers, and Niners that are going to get dubs for us in Hammer. Don. And uh, we'll be back Monday with a good one. Shout out to Mitt. Shout out to Herbo. Shout out to all the boys in the back. Shout out to you for watching and allowing us to do this every single day for a living. It is a joke. We have a dumb show. We enjoy the hell out of ourselves, but we are so thankful for you. When we go on to ESPN, date to be announced. It has been figured out. Okay. Nice. TBA. What's the You're going to announce the date that we're going to announce it? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm thinking. Date. Yeah, can't find it. Yep. Okay. TB o- October tenth. No, nice. I think. I think. Hold on. Let me check. We're gonna start us right in the heart of the season. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think August seventeenth, the date will be announced. All right. I think that's the date. Okay. A week. Next. Next week. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Is that a? It's next, coming up. And next Thursday. Next Thursday. Thursday. Thursday yeah. How many days do we have till football? Twenty. Next Thursday. Things are starting to happen. Less than four weeks. Week from yesterday. Let's four go. Weeks from yesterday. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the hell out of it. Remember. Our weekends are going to be packed with football just around the corner. Mm -hmm. So enjoy this time and know that football days are ahead. We love you all. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Goodbye.